our planet. He's a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. I'm sure you're aware by now, but this is not plain old Super Mario Galaxy. Kaizo Mario Galaxy takes what Super Mario Galaxy crafted and breaks it entirely, creating a whole new insane way of playing the game. From modified levels, interesting traps, frustrating puzzles, and even some creative liberties, Kaizo Galaxy proves to be an incredibly difficult way to experience the trek across space as Mario. Our goal is simple enough. Amass enough power stars, free a multitude of galaxies from Bowser's tyranny, travel to the center of the universe, and ultimately save our beloved princess from Bowser at the peak of his power. Or die trying. Oh. This is Kaizo Mario Galaxy. I have everything working on an actual Wii. It's it's real. Those are my legs. This is my pink Wiimote. This is not a metaphor for anything. This is this is a pink Wiimote. It has Wii Motion Plus. Our story today begins as it usually does. Mario is going to see Peach at the Star Festival, something that occurs once every 100 years in the Mushroom Kingdom. Of course, what kind of Mario game would it be if Bowser didn't end up crashing the party? I proceed through the terrorized town square as normal until I eventually make it to the castle where this is this is Kaizo already. The gate's closed. I can't spin. Is there any place I can like fit past? So I start problem solving. At this point, I don't have the Luma who allows us to spin, so I have to get creative with trying to launch ourselves over the gate. Keep in mind, I'm not even on the first level of the game. I'm in the tutorial section, but Kaizo Mario Galaxy sets the bar high right off the rip. Is there a tree or something? Ah, I got hit by a damn meteor. I may have to die. I could die. So instead of clearing the gate with some frame perfect jump, my only way forward was the cold embrace of death. Symbolic of what's to come, I guess. Oh, let's go. All right, the solution was to die, folks. We're past the gate. Of course, this is when Bowser actually kidnaps Princess Peach and Kamek blasts Mario into space, hurtling him toward the first actual level of the game. Here on the Gateway Planet, I'm expected to track down and catch three star bunnies. Luckily, this section was kept pretty tame, and I meet our companion Luma as well as Princess Rosalina. With his newfound ability to spin, Mario's kit is now complete. I make my way through the first level, stomp some Goombas, free some Lumas, and eventually deactivate the core of Bowser's Grand Star Reactor. I'm able to use the Grand Star's power to fuel the ship's engine, and Rosalina explains to me that we've now gained access to the first dome of the game, the Terrace. I remake the Death Counter graphic, add a hat to the dead Mario, and shoot off into the stars, ready for whatever's to come. Landing in the first real galaxy of the game, Good Egg Galaxy, I immediately recognize that there's been some pretty hefty changes to the progression of the game overall. I start exploring around the starting planet, and eventually launch myself to the peanut-shaped planet, where I start encountering some difficulty. Oh, wow, okay, we're gonna... Okay, we're in a bad spot already. Or are there any coins? I, I know I can spin them to... I, I know, I've played Mario Galaxy before, guys. I've played Mario, don't worry, don't worry. Oh. Many of you who've played Mario Galaxy before know what this is. For those of you that don't, this is a star chip. In many levels, in order to progress forward, Mario needs to collect five of these star chips in order to form a launch star. Normally, these star chips are in pretty easily accessible areas, but to increase difficulty... Oh, brother, I do not know. Oh, man. Okay. 
that might be that might be a play. Hold on. Yes, baby, let's go! Luckily, despite taking away the coins on the planet, Dino Piranha is just as much of a pushover in Kaizo as in Vanilla, and I net myself a second star. Immediately, I head right back into Good Egg Galaxy for the Hungry Luma Star, and Kaizo Galaxy introduces some new, very important mechanics for me to become acquainted with. This is where Pulsars appear for the first time, and Pulsar manipulation is going to be crucial to navigating these levels both fast and effectively. I need to learn Pulsar Momentum. I know all about Pulsar Momentum. I know that the further away you do the Pulsar... Oh, that's not even like... I think I could just triple jump it, guys. Yeah, I can just triple jump it. Who needs a freaking pulse star? All I need is a straight line and these kick-ass Air Jordans on my feet. This level of Good Egg also introduces me to the cannon, which is used to shoot Mario from planet to planet. This is usually pretty simple in vanilla, but with Kaizo's different map layouts, there are going to be some tricky shots we need to make. Oh, it's asking- it's just- it's- it's begging for me to shoot at this star. It's begging. Sometimes, the cannon can be a little finicky. See, there's a certain distance you can travel before going into an out-of-control animation where you're as good as dead. Okay. So, oh my god, and I'm back here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Does it take away all my star bits upon dying? Yep, you heard that right. Unlike the original, Kaizo Galaxy takes away star bits upon death, meaning the only way to successfully earn star bits for the Hungry Lumas in the observatory is to actually complete the level with star bits. This prevents star bit grinding and often forces the player to collect every single available star bit in a level just to pay for the Hungry Luma. Um, we have to go in here. Zoom in by holding Z and moving the Wiimote toward the screen. That doesn't sound real, but I'm going to do it right now. What? I am indeed going to get all of the star bits that I can. And again, if we die, it just stinks. Okay, how do we get to this planet? I'm just going to hit right here. Nice. How do I get inside though is there a way for me to get to the yoshi planet does this kill me the answer's the answer's maybe i don't know what's happening oh my god what's going on uh okay i blast over to the yoshi egg planet to find ourselves the hungry luma we've been looking for how much does this hungry luma need don't tell me 300. <clears throat> okay. This is going to be the fastest 300 star bits you've ever seen collected in your entire life. See, we're already at two. Hef, you should have gotten the star bits on the beginning planet. Yes. Yes, I should have. You're right. I optimistically attempt to shoot back to the starting planet to collect some of the star bits I missed, and... Never mind, we can't go back to the beginning planet like that. I spend the next several minutes gathering star bits from the small belt of planets I can, and finally make it to the 300 mark. And we're in the money. As it turns out, this is required to progress with the level. All right, now let's not die to anything stupid and silly like that crushing us. That would, that would stink. After a short climb through the pill-shaped planet, I launch to the star-shaped planet to long jump into my third star of the run, suffering two deaths in the process. This unlocks Honey Hive Galaxy, which after polling my chat, Sorry, good egg galaxy, but you've been a bad egg today. We're going to Honey Hive instead. Honey Hive opens with a quick lesson in Mario Galaxy slope climbing tech. So as I learn how to do it in the background, here's an explanation of what's going on. Slope climbing, often referred to as a glitch, is a type of movement option that allows Mario to traverse vertical slopes with more ease. You may remember this section as one that'll put you into the sliding animation upon coming into contact with the slope. This is spin slope climbing, which allows Mario to simply spin and ignore the game trying to put him in the sliding state. Another way to do this is simply, while sliding down, jump away from the slope and spin to gain height while landing back on the slope. 
You can slowly gain height in this way. Make sure to jump out away from the slope, as if your control stick is pointed in a way that makes the game think you want to keep climbing, it's going to put you in that slide animation. This tech will come in handy over multiple pieces of the run, so it's important to get out of the way explaining it now. I spend a good deal of my time wandering the main planet, looking for the way forward, when I finally make my way up to the waterfall slope to perform another slope run. Okay, there we are. Does this slope work the same way? After trying a precise triple jump for a couple minutes, I can't do like just the run up the slope like this. Like it's it's too steep. Or maybe never mind. You can do it. You can. Uh okay. Uh, how do I get over there? Like this. Where do I go? Do I have to go to the back side of the level, right? Why is there a black hole right there? It's too close. It's making me uncomfortable. After climbing the planet and making my way over to the launch star. Kind of weak sauce for Kaizo Hack. It's level four. I don't know what to tell you. No B Mario. Uh, listen, it's possible that we don't get B Mario at all. I think we don't get B Mario in the B Mario takes flight level. Okay. Is the best. Oh, it actually. No! It actually pushes you. It actually squirts you upward. I didn't even know. After some trial and error with the water fountains and trying to get to the launch star without touching these flowers. Backflip, spin. Yes. I finally get my hands on the bee mushroom power up for the first time. Bee Mario takes flight. For real, this time. You know what we gotta do. You know what this bee's here for. Little TLC for our queen. Fellas, if you're not doing this to your lady every night, then I gotta say, she's gonna leave you. After giving that queen bee just a little bit of honey, I shoot our way over to Captain Toad, who awards me with the fourth star of my adventure. Back to Good Egg Galaxy for King Caliente's battle fleet. After a fierce 1v1 with an Octumba, we make our way to the title fleet of ships where I'm forced to figure out a way to the other side. If I long jump, spin, wall kick, spin, I think it'll be fine. Or it won't let me wall kick, and that counts as a death. Okay, I guess we don't, uh, can't wall kick that wall. Good to know. We can do the bridge. All right, good. I end up on King Caliente's planet, and all of a sudden, it's boss fight time. Luckily, the bosses aren't too much more difficult than they are in the base game, so I smack them with a few coconuts to net myself my fifth star of the run. Unlocking Loop de Loop, we decide to go right back to Honey Hive for the trouble on the tower star. Four deaths? No, five deaths. Five stars. A death per star? That's not bad. Just like my last outing in Honey Hive, I run around lost for a few minutes as I collect some star bits and try to get better at spin slope climbing. This whole run up the slope thing with the spins is like kind of finicky. After making my way to the top of the planet, I'm finally able to utilize the launch star at the top, which was previously a black hole, and make my way to the titled tower. Everything consistent, this is probably one of the easiest levels in the game until we get to the windmill. Is there any way you can make this particular level harder? Cause like, I mean, if I'm being honest, like, we're already here. I guess you stop the windmill. That's where that works. The bees must be on strike after their queen displayed, let's say, some unroyal like behavior with Mario. And I'm forced to try to ascend the windmill in its frozen state. Okay, that's sort of gonna work. No, no, no! No, that's the last thing I wanted. I end up spending the next five or so minutes just trying to climb the frozen windmill. And finally. Oh, we did it! can't make this guy any harder, can you? And star number six is mine. Squish. Um, let's go back to Honey Hive, I guess, huh? And then we'll do the loop-de-loop. -loop. Time for Bugaboo. After getting lost for the third time on the Honey Hive starting planet, I end up making it back up to the top of the waterfall just to end up doing some problem solving. That's the thing, is that like, I just don't remember the level progression. Like if I go here, right? Huh? Huh? Oh no, oh no, 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 what the, what the? 
I love the camera changing like six million times just as I do one single jump and then it changes my momentum based on how gravity shifts and how the camera changes. So instead of just jumping down and sliding, Mario decided to take a whole ass 50 yard dash from where he started. Bugaboom is exactly the same with one small catch. B Mario is unavailable during the fight. So I have to be a little more precise just trying to get on top of Bugaboom to defeat him. Thankfully, this isn't so hard, and I grab the seventh star of the run. When does the Kaizo start? There's the loop-de-loop -loop and the flip switch. They'll probably both be pretty quick. Now, at another crossroads, I unlock Flip Switch Galaxy. And as I poll my chat on what level they'd like to see me play first, I decided to feed the Terrace's hungry Luma and make my way over to the sweet, sweet galaxy. I would never go to an entirely separate galaxy as I wait for this poll to be completed. I would never do such a thing. Where? Okay. Uh, how about... Oh, what the f... So this very harmless vanilla level turned into one that began to give the title of Kaizo Mario Galaxy some credibility. Mario's dropped onto a spring mushroom right from the moment he lands in on the level, and I have no choice but to traverse the entire thing with this handicap of a power-up. No! No, what? This is probably the way to make this level the most frustrating possible. Don't kill me. Crap. I'm gonna die. Yep. This sucks. 17 deaths later, and suffering our first of many game overs, I decided to pivot and see if Loop de Loop Galaxy could net us the 8th star of the run. I mean, how could they possibly have changed this motion control, minigame-esque level to be more difficult? I, oh, oh my god, I need to get star pieces? I'm sorry. Yeah, so in order to progress through Loop de Loop, you have to be able to collect all of the launch star pieces in one loop of the track. And while a couple of them are gifted to you pretty neatly during the course, some others require just a little bit of improvisation. Half? Are you serious? Oh, we're actually smooth with it. Hold up. Now, we didn't beat the time. So, oh, oh. And in order to go back that way, I need to... Yep, yep. See you later. See you, Mario. See you. Of course, this is already a difficult ask, as controlling the manta ray... Well, it proves to be challenging. Yeah, how, how did we do that first try and we haven't been able to get it since? No! No! Okay, how do I turn? Can I turn around here? Can I go back up this? What the f I can? <laughs> the things you learn in Kaizo Mario Galaxy. Okay. Oh, got it. Okay. How, oh my god, it's right there. How am I supposed to do that? Okay. What? How did I miss? Dude, I was right on top of it. Oh, we're gonna die. Oh, no we didn't. Oh, we're dead. We're dead. I'm glad we decided that the loop-de-loop -loop was the way to go. We're stuck between manta ray parkour and spring parkour. I... How did I go over it? No, no, no. Stop. Stop going. No, I can't. <laughs> it just wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, once you do this, once you get all the way around and you stop moving or bouncing, you can't do anything. What the heck? Brother, brother. <laughs> oh, no. God, you can't. I have to, I have to turn like that. Close. Yes! No! 
<laughs> I'm going like this. I had a pretty good time grinding this level out, despite the controls, and I'm able to, after nine total deaths, collect all five launch star pieces during a single lap. Okay. Stop. Stop. Carry it through the finish line, buddy. Oh, and a pretty damn good time, too. Actually, wait a minute. If I have to get under a minute 30, the stream ends right now. This meant that I got to see where the launch star was gonna end up taking me. And well, it wasn't what I was expecting. Oh, this is interesting as Mario Galaxy Kaizo. This is pretty cool. All right. Only here, folks. Only here. Let's get this and let's get the heck up on out of here. Discovered an enemy base. I don't care. I'm going to flip switch. With the eighth star under my belt, instead of going back to the sweet, sweet galaxy, I decide to scope out Flip Switch Galaxy and its level. Painting the planet yellow. Painting the planet yellow. Uh. Okay. Oh no. And I can't move the camera? Almost immediately, I'm met with a game over, as I only had one life upon entering the level in the first place. Okay, this is gonna suck a lot. <laughs> okay, that's a game over, all right. That's good to, good to start the, yeah, that's, that's cool. So I briefly hang up the paintbrush and pivot to see if I can get the objectively easier Rocky Road Star in the sweet, sweet galaxy first. After suffering another game over on the Rocky Road, I load back in and one death later, wait, no, no. No. Oh god. A bounce higher! Okay, shh, shh. Oh. The ninth star of the game is mine. A total of 23 deaths later. Oh. That felt good. That felt good. It. This is why I like very hard games, guys, is because you do something 30 times, and on the 31st time you get it, you're like, that's nice. It was time to go back. Flip Switch was a real wake-up call when it came to discovering what Kaizo Mario Galaxy was going to demand from me. Flip Switch forced me to push past my surface level understanding of Galaxy's physics engine and become a better player overall. While some of my failed attempts play in the background, let's discuss how Flip Switch has been made specifically to hone your skills within Kaizo Mario Galaxy. Public enemy number one in Kaizo Mario Galaxy isn't actually an enemy at all, but rather the in-game camera. During your bog standard playthrough of Super Mario Galaxy, there will be instances where the camera decides that it won't let you turn it, in which case you're forced to go into first person mode using up on the Wiimote's D-pad. When the camera's turning feature is locked, oftentimes this means that in order to line up a precise jump, you'll have to go into first person, plan your trajectory, exit, and then execute the jump blindly. Combine this with some super precise triple jumping, wall jumping, and spinning, and you've crafted a recipe for one of the toughest levels in the entire game. Painting the planet yellow is preparing me for the camera manipulations and precise jumps to come, and eats away at my lives faster than I'm even able to earn them back. Save my progress and quit? Question mark? Asks the game. After suffering another game over while attempting to find the correct path through Flip Switch, I decide to again put a pin in our training and to instead take on the Terrace's boss level, Megaleg's Moon. The lead up to the boss is short, but has a bit of nuance. Normally you're supposed to lead a bullet bill into the glass dome to unlock the launch star that blasts you over to Megaleg's planet. But with no bullet bills spawning, I have to manipulate Galaxy's gravity engine in order to get it to pull us over to Megaleg's planet by using a triple jump. Okay, there's Megaleg, baby. Ooh, this is a very strange way to do this, though. Upon arriving on the planet, though, Passing. things were a little strange. All right, well, we're on Megaleg. Wait, what? Does Megaleg not activate? Is this a thing that happens in the vanilla game? Like, if you don't take the launch star, does Megaleg not activate? I didn't start the cutscene. This is, this is the first time I've done anything like this. Am I gonna die? Okay, no, I'm... Great camera, can't change it. Good camera, can't change it. Good camera, can't change it. Awesome camera. Super duper good camera. There we go. Okay, we're flying through the sky and we touch down right in front of 
Megaleg on the other side. And we go boom. And Bowser Jr. goes, hey, you totally just arrived on the planet. And I go, yes, absolutely. I just got here. Definitely didn't scout out Megaleg beforehand without any animations. Definitely not. Okay, sounds good. And he flies away. Even with Mega Leg activated, I encounter an issue with trying to retrieve the Grand Star that crowns the giant mech. Normally, there are cannons on top which shoot bullet bills used to break the Grand Star's cage. However, where is the bullet bill I have to lead? Oh, this is, that's Cap. Oh, that's Cap. That's, that's, that's not right. This is not right. I have to lead him all the way up Mega Leg. The only bullet bills on the level in Kaizo are shot from Mega Leg's underside, forcing me to lead them all the way up to the star at the very top. I love the concept, I'll admit. First try right now, first try right now. Okay. Thankfully, this doesn't prove to be that difficult, and after suffering a stray death from a loose bullet bill, I'm able to lead two of them all the way up to Mega Leg to claim the second Grand Star. Above and beyond the gate. Woo! And we never even got hit by Mega Leg, just by three bullet bills that he just happened to shoot. After a few unsuccessful attempts at painting the planet yellow, I'm gonna get out a protractor, I swear to God. From straight on, it is about 45 degrees to the right. So that means it's basically this way. Basically that way. Dude, I'm... Is that game over? Okay. I'm not gonna do that galaxy for a minute. I make my way into the fountain's dome and take a peek at the second set of galaxies. Space junk is on the docket and its first star is no joke. I wonder if it's a triple jump or a long jump. Okay, long jump works, that works. Is it just pull star path with no pull stars? Do I have to jump on this? No way. Oh, there's a pole star. All right. Now what? Okay, wait. Hey guys, guess what? It's a Pikmin reference. Look at the ship. Wow. Oh my God. Who would play that stupid game though? Please. Dude, I can't, I can't even have my cursor like that far up. I had it. You heard it. You heard it. Yes! Doubters? Where are you, doubters? Where are you? Doesn't it show up once I free every toad? Am I missing something here? Hold on. Where'd your glasses go? I don't know. Oh, look at that. Okay, hold on. It's gonna have to be a triple jump. With no toad ship in sight, I'm tasked with having to manipulate gravity and perform a pretty precise triple jump in order to get us to the junk pit. It's so high up. Like, I can't believe you have to use the gravity to try to do this. That one felt good. I felt that one in my teeth. All right, how are we gonna do flip switch galaxy if we can't even land this triple jump? Off camera grinding, yep. Hey guys, I beat Mario Galaxy off stream, so. Oh my God, thank you fucking Lord. <laughs> Upon arriving, I am met with the grim reality of space junk. Oh no. Oh no. You know that feeling when you sit down to take a test and you look at question one and you realize that none of what you've done the entire year has prepared you for the test? Space junk exists to emulate that exact feeling. It's my silver star impression. Did you like it? Brother, there's nothing? <laughs> what do you mean there's nothing? Not even like a little tiny platform? 
I thought I would at least gain information. I'm gonna go up this time. Nothing? I have four lives. I have four more attempts to try to do this. But if I can land on the blocks before they fly into place? I don't think so. There's no indication for where they may spawn either. Although... Wait! Maybe I can. No fucking shot. <laughs> what the hell? I just, I, I have to, I have to try. I have to learn. I have to learn somehow. We should stack up on lives somehow. After some guess and check work, I get another game over. And once again, I'm left in a pretty bad spot. Mail Toad. Lives around the observatory. Okay. This is no longer a one-up. This is a coin. Just because, f*** you. Get good, scrub. Stop dying. I'm Rosalina talking to Mario. Get good, scrub. Stop dying. No wonder Peach left you for a big old dragon. But then she got the kidnapped. <laughs> yeah, okay. Keep telling yourself that. Bowser could probably triple jump with gravity. Bowser can make frame perfect jumps. What can you do, Mario? I can fix the plumbing. Yeah, all right, not her plumbing though. Hey, hey. <gasps> boom. I start grinding some more lives in Good Egg and decide to bounce back to painting the planet yellow. As I felt, with a decent amount of lives now, I'd have a good shot. <laughs> How naive I was. Oh. Dude. No! What the f- I was met with a very real dilemma. Grinding star bits just to simply have enough lives to burn in order to figure out these levels was proving to be way too slow of a method. Luckily, one of my chatters, Mario Kirby 1703, came in incredibly clutch for me here. Hey, look at that. That is gonna save us probably hours of our life, potentially days. Now, with 99 lives and infinite determination, I got to work. Damn it. Oh, look at that, guys. The big one hundo. We've made it. Now that I have 99 lives, or rather 76, I'm reckless abandon. Flip Switch Galaxy is a grind. It has multiple, incredibly tight jumps and demands near perfection when it comes to execution. One small slip up and every single switch you hit goes right back to blue. <laughs> yes! Okay. Hold. Oh no! 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 Oh, you stupid little butt. Whoa, shouldn't have went there, but I did. And I died. Talk about that. That was even uglier. 
Where's the platform? Ah. Oh man, that's cheeks. We're at 141 also. I don't think I updated the last time. Red platform coming to take away the attempt. Eventually, my hard work pays off and I get on a run where everything lines up just right. Oh no. Wait, I could totally triple jump that though. 96 deaths later, my training arc concludes and the planet is finally painted yellow. Yes! Ah! <sighs> Rolling in the clouds, is a very silly course, as I'm sure you can see. And the bombs have a way of comboing me just enough to send Mario plummeting to his doom almost every time. What the f Dude! Brother! I just got down here! No, no, why did you- mm, okay. I'm being blown apart, tossed around, and most of all frustrated by both the motion controls and the bub bombs tendency to just camp me. No, not again! I can't even go fast enough, bro. It's fine! Hold forward, ignore the boos. Dude, the boos don't even like explode until they start charging at you. I'm pretty sure, what the f What the f what the, f what, the f what the, what the, what? <laughs> So, go based. Why? Nice. All right, do we get lucky? Luck, skill? But 17 lives later, I'm finally able to claim the 12th star. Before I return to Polestar Path, I decided it's time to see what Battle Rock has in store. And I gotta say, it's really weird. There's a pretty finicky triple jump and just a shockingly unwelcome surprise. How far is that? I, okay. Okay, can you change the camera for me, please? Like, I can't just have it straight on. Like, I have to be at this, like, All right, now it feels more natural. I don't even know what to do. Like, will the yellow platform actually hold me? The answer's freaking no. Wait, hold on. Hold up. I'm making progress. I know I punched my microphone, but I'm doing something. That's right. The UFO that accompanies this auto-scrolling section is missing, meaning I have to get from this block all the way to the end of the level without it. This proves to be challenging. Yeah, I'm gonna die from this part though. Okay, that's great. That's cool. It's awesome. No, 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 it's good. No, 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 it's good. It's fine. It's fine. I'm only upset. <laughs> yeah, there was no shot. Get out. This is too low. So we need to long jump further. I thought if I went lower here, it'd be fine. Wait. Oh no, I'm dead, dead. Okay. I'm just gonna get hit, and then I'm gonna try to keep spinning through it, and I'm dead. Never mind. I don't know how to get past this part, I'm gonna be honest. Like, it's go under it, obviously. 
if there's a third red gate, I don't think we win. Because I can't make it past. I did. Holy sh**. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. No. Where are we? Okay. Uh. Uh. We should eventually gravitate toward the disc. Don't! Oh, I almost got electrocuted. I would have been so mad. The good news is, is that upon making it to the dual UFO section, the rest of the level isn't too much to write home about. 11 lives lost, and I grabbed the 13th star. No. Okay, here we are. This is when I was graced by the first appearance of a prankster comet. For those who are unfamiliar, there are five different types of prankster comets, four of which you'll be seeing throughout this journey. There are speedy comets. Mario is put against a strict timer to beat the level. If the time runs out, the player will just cease to exist. Daredevil comets. Mario only has one point of health, so even the tiniest mistake can spell certain death. Cosmic Comets. Mario races to the star against Cosmic Mario in a remixed version of a galaxy. Fast Foe Comets, where enemies and obstacles speed up in a portion of the galaxy, and honestly the music gets pretty obnoxious. And finally, Purple Coin Comets, where Mario has to collect 100 purple coins in order to spawn the star in the first place. We won't be seeing any purple comets, as they only appear after beating the game for the first time. But everything else is fair game, and speaking of... Dino Piranha Speedrun. Now, this is not the one where we have to collect the star bits, which is good. The Dino Piranha Speedrun gives me four minutes to make it all the way to Dino Piranha and collect the star. Oh no, it's the Peanut Planet. This jump sucks. Oh boy, okay, this, yeah, this is gonna be not fun. Given the tweaks made to Good Egg, this proved to be kind of tricky, as multiple precise jumps and some bullet bill manipulation proved fatal. There's too many dogs here. There's too many. I can't even maneuver. Please. Please. Shoot the damn bullet. I have no time for this. Please. Unless I just get, like, really absurdly lucky, which I'm not gonna. No, it's over. Mario. It's fine. Dino Piranha is still a pushover, so once I make it back to him, 11 lives later, I'm able to get the star. Back to Battle Rock Galaxy, and it's level breaking into the Battle Rock. How do we break into the Battle Rock, is the question. I'm not gonna bother with the Star Bits, actually. Who knows what the hell the rest of the level entails. Oh, actually, no, I needed the Star Bits for the Hungry Luma. Hi. 90, okay. I have 16, which is not very much. I should have gotten the rest of the Star Bits. 45, we put 16 in there, that's 61. We get 70 total? Yeah, I need to die. I wouldn't put it past the game to have exactly 90 star bits here. It's 36. If each chain chomp drops nine, there needs to be at least six chain chomps, which I think there actually may only be exactly six. Hey, can you give me my bomb? Uh. Excuse me. It's a possibility that it only drops the two. It's a possibility. All right, so there's no way I can blow up both with one bomb, right? Yeah, it really only spawns two bombs. Huh. You know the explosion can hit a cage on the other side if I do it right? Really? I think I'm just gonna keep sending the level, maybe? This is a pretty fun level, mostly because I didn't have to deal with the slope jumping and the electric fences like I did the first time. I initially tried to go for the hidden star located at Battle Rock's garbage dump, but I don't get enough star bits and proceed the first level anyway. I need to make the cannon shot in one go or I'll die. Good to know. Let's do it. Oh, you mean like, like one go. Okay, so we need to do this in the middle. Yeah. 
Okay, got it. <laughs> uh, I feel like this moves faster. Is that just me? I don't know if I was off the mark. Oh no! No, I need to do it when it's... Uh, no. Okay. I'm going to shoot as it just barely reveals itself, like right there. Four more lives lost. This shot nets me my 15th star and unlocks the next galaxy of the run. Bowser's Star Reactor, and its level, the Fiery Stronghold. Bowser. This level's relatively tame by Kaizo standards. Whee! What? But Bowser ends up killing me a few times. Not during his fight, but during the ascent to him to try to trigger the fight's opening cutscene. Honestly, some of these deaths were just entirely my fault. I, I was curious how the cutscene trigger actually worked, so I ended up doing a little bit of experimentation. See, like right here, I want to try to wall jump this. It doesn't let you wall jump. So like, look. Nice. Bowser was right. a pushover, and with eight deaths in the reactor, I claimed the second grand star of the run. Let's go to the Battle Rock Galaxy. I'm not even going to... Wait, I'm just gonna send it. I return to Battle Rock to defeat Top Maniac and the Top Man Tribe. Not that bad. Okay, wait. There we are. There we go. Oh, and I get shocked immediately. Dude, no way. You're you're lying to me. That can't be real. I totally made that. You guys can see the gravity change, right? Like that's not just me. Um, but if I lose to Vanilla Top Man, I want you guys to go to the comment section and I want you to tell me that I'm a fraud and not a real gamer. Only if I lose to, to, this, to this version of Top Man right now, okay? This boss, bro, there's nothing he could do to make this boss harder. Despite a couple close calls, I end up completing this level first try for our 17th star. Back to Polestar Path, it's time to go to work again. Polestar Path. Oh, great launch. Awesome launch. And a follow through to the finish onto the platform. He's made it. This jump sucks. This jump took us a very long time last time. How did this work again? Oh my god, I got it the first freaking try? All it took was 96 deaths and three hours in the Flip Switch Galaxy. And now we're good at the game. Officially good at the game. That was our training arc, okay? Besides the strenuous and precise triple jumps required to even get to the junk pit, the real hurdle with this level comes with collecting the five silver stars littered around. And I have 99 lives, so I can show you. Uh, so, watch this. Yeah, this is great. Oh, there was no... No platform anywhere forward? How do you know where the platforms are? Haha. Ha. Very funny, Chad. Very funny. You don't. Once you collect all five silver stars, they fuse together to form a normal power star. The first silver star is easy enough to grab, but once I realized that the junk pieces still had active collision, even when they weren't popped into place... Things got much tougher. Oh, what? Oh, we're right there? Two stars. How do we get to number three? Long jump and spin? Oh, okay. It's a box. Polestar Path was a game of guessing and checking. Combined with the RNG rotations of these loose junk pieces, 200 deaths. <laughs> the big 200. It made for a really unforgiving experience. I'm literally dying so fast, I just forget about it. It's not like Flip Switch, where the level itself will take us, like, 15 minutes. Okay, wait, wait, wait. 
we're there. Okay, so here's here's my my dilemma, right? That's not close enough. This is, but I can only. Do I think I could? Oh my god, I'm probably gonna have to backflip spin into it. I, I think it's too high. I think we try to jump over here, like as far as we can, and just see what's up. Cause this is all the info stage, right? We didn't learn anything. Good. Wall jump to pink platform that goes off when jumping. Wall jump of that guy? What do you mean? I'll try. It'll be fun. I'll try it. Hold up. Ah, uh, brother. Mm, brother, I don't know about that one. Try going right first. All right, I'm gonna try going right first this time. All right, we're getting. Uh, that is what you do. That is what you do. And it's a long jump, not a triple jump. There it is. Now, see, there's this one right there. <laughs> yeah, there's this one. How do I get to there from there? Oh, sneaky, sneaky. How do I get there though? Oh, there's a, there is a little yellow platform right there. Okay, we're learning. I'm excited because we now have all of the pieces. We just need to put them together. Jumping blindly into space, just hoping to find something to land on was tough. And through a grueling process of trial and error, I'm eventually able to string together a run where I collect all five silver stars and make it back to the starting platform to claim the 18th star of the run. A grand total of 51 lives lost here. Woo! Feels good. Feels good. That's just figuring it out, guys. We're just we're just figuring it out, okay? Me and you. We're like Sherlock, and all of you guys are the collective Watson. The Watson Collective. <laughs> I love that actually. Daredevil Comet? After Pullstar Path, I spot the appearance of another comet, this time for Top Maniac's Daredevil Run. So it looks like I'm locked to one health point for this level. It's fine, we just don't take damage here. Instead of just having to fight the boss, the Daredevil Comet makes me complete the entire level cover to cover without getting hit. I need to avoid that at all costs. So how do I do that? <laughs> How do I do that? This proves to be moderately challenging due to some tricky jumps and a really unforgiving fire bar. <laughs> what? No, no, at the top of his head. Are you serious? Why did I jump? Because I thought I'd make it over him. And because I thought the game would, you know, Reward me for my skillful play. <gasps> I'm being rizzed on by the top tribe. What's happening? Call me a fake gamer. I want negative reinforcement in my chat pronto. Right now. You guys are allowed to be mad. Go ahead. Go ahead. I can take it. I promise. With a little perseverance and after suffering a death to top maniac, I claim the 19th star of the run, another eight lives lost. I'm wondering how this is gonna work. At this point, I turn my attention to a cosmic comet that appeared in Honey Hive Galaxy and get ready to race Cosmic Mario. I lose a life attempting to figure out the best way down to the power star. Let's just see what he does. You lead the way, buddy. Lead, lead the way. All right, so then, but once I was told by my chat just to jump off the right side of the level by the fountain to cheese it, it fell into place, and all of a sudden, I had 20 stars. 
Camella's airship attack is one of many levels in Kaizo Mario Galaxy where I'm forced to problem solve my way forward. Where am I going? What is even happening right now? I can't change the... There we go. Okay, okay, okay. I literally can't even look forward. I guess it doesn't even let you look forward. There's no way to find out. I, I can't change the camera angle. Hold on. This might be one of those moments in Mario Galaxy where like the gravity of a planet is so strong that it actually like rips you in from way farther than uh, the game should. So I'm thinking it's not. It's not one of those situations. The trickiest part of the level is the inability to move the camera to survey your surroundings, forcing me to take leaps of faith just to discover the secrets hidden in the level. I check the front of the ships, the port and the starboard sides, but eventually discover that after breaking the chest on the far ship with the Koopa shell, the launch star actually spawns all the way back on the beginning set of Toad Brigade ships. It's kind of unbelievable. Uh, I have to get over there somehow. And they're only spitting what seems like the fiery coconuts. Once I discover this, and after finally making a tricky long jump forward, there it is, baby. That's what I'm talking about. I'm able to defeat Camilla for our 21st star, seven lives lost during this interstellar cruise. Hey, where'd the star go? Is the star just over here, or is it... Where is the star? Where did it even go? Am I stupid? Did I not look for it? Is it on that one, or is... it has to be on that one, right? Like, there's no way up on this one. Oh! Okay, we found it. Terran Tox's tangled web in space junk houses a hungry Luma that leads you to the Yoshi planet with all of the Goombas. You know the one. At first, I think that's pretty simple as comboing all the Goombas on the planet, but realize that upon defeating them, this is just not enough to spawn the star. I think I probably just need to kill all of them. I think it's just like vanilla. I think vanilla, you just need to kill all of them. Unless there's another step that I'm completely missing. Is it a 12 combo? What do we think the answer is? You know that Ed Sheeran song? You know, it's Shape of You. The Shape of You is not about uh, his wife. No, 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 no. It's about Yoshi. Kill every Goomba, even the Goomba's not on this planet. Oh, that might be. So I need to not start here. I need to end here. This is not a starter planet. It is a finisher planet. <laughs> As it turns out, prior to arriving on the Yoshi planet, you have to track down a stray Goomba hiding on this glassy planet, which has moved from the Yoshi planet. The star cost me three lives, but all in all, it was a pretty neat twist on the level. Uh, Cosmic Comet. Another Cosmic Comet race pops up and the Pole Star Path speedrun commences. What? Despite the presence of the same tricky triple jumps, I'm able to grab my 23rd star with zero lives lost. Cosmic Mario stood no chance here. I don't know what was going on, I was just playing hot. Terran Tox's Tangled Web is another space junk level that requires some creative platforming and gravity manipulation. But like most of the boss-centric levels in Kaizo Mario Galaxy, it proves to be fairly tame, and I grab the 24th star of the run. Throughout the first third of the game, I was able to amass enough star bits to pay for the Hungry Luma by the fountain. I pay the Pied Piper, but instead of proceeding directly to the new galaxy, I wanted to try my hand at Hurry Scurry Galaxy, where I realized that there's going to be a very real, physical component to the game. What the absolute... Is there one under every platform? I'm gonna get arthritis. By the time I'm done with this level, my hands might not work, guys. I have to spin about 50 times per attempt. The shrinking satellite takes the musical notes that dot the planet and places them underneath the shrinking platforms. I don't know the pattern, so I'd like to figure out maybe the pattern first. They're like diagonal to each other. And it doesn't seem like the whole planet has it. Like, this whole side doesn't really have it. That one's in the middle? 
That one, that has to be the last one you get. There's no other way, right? It looks totally random. There is no rhyme or reason for how these notes are placed, and after giving it a decent shot, losing 15 lives in the process, I just decide to move forward and put a pin in this level for now. There was no way I was doing this right now. Look at this guy. Hef, did you know if two captains run into the spray at the same time, you can get double sprays? Also, I made this cool new mod for you if you want to play it. It's every cave is 99 floors in Pikmin 2 and full of enemies. And it's it's really, I, I worked really hard on it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> People get some strays out here, man. Mario Galaxy Kaizo makes me mean. Dude, I, 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 don't, I don't know about this galaxy. There's no way I do the Hurry Scurry Galaxy tonight. That is an entirely separate stream. We're going to blow up some trash. It's time for the Battle Rock Secret Star. Battle Rock's garbage dump. Here's the thing. I need to get 90 star bit to blow up trash. This one's pretty straightforward. Is you need to feed this hungry Luma all 90 star bits available from the beginning of the level. However, there's one pretty interesting complication. This bomb dispenser right here has been altered to only drop two bombs. And with a total of three cages on the starting collection of saucers, the game is asking you to blow up both the top and bottom glass cages containing star bits at the same time with a single bomb, and to use the second one to release the caged launch star. Apparently, this is accomplished by a super precise bomb throw that hits both the bottom cage and the top cage. I attempt this for almost half an hour, having to back out of the level every single time I mess up the precise throw. Eventually, for whatever reason, the game decides to take pity on me? Dude, what in the world? Now there's another bomb? I'm so lost. I'll take it, but I'm really confused. The game eventually spawned a third bomb, seemingly out of nowhere, which I know isn't intentional, since I spent literally half an hour working with the two that were given to me. I waited for a third bomb multiple times. It never came, except for this one attempt. I don't know what happened here, but I was thankful for it regardless. The garbage dump is nothing to write home about. It's still just about as tough as the base game. Maybe there's a few more piles of trash. I'm not sure, but no deaths were suffered for this 25th star, even though it took a really long time. After taking out the trash, I sling over to the Sling Pod Galaxy and find myself in a very sticky situation. Yes, there is B Mario. It looks like there's B Mario instead. Yeah, I also noticed it. Noticed it? No. T -t -p -a? Anyway, this is interesting. This continues the trend of Kaizo Galaxy eliminating the namesake of the galaxy. So instead of moving around with sling pods, instead, I'm given the bee mushroom power up. Okay, wait. I'm cheesing the whole level. I'm vertical, baby. Oh, I think I need the bee mushroom. Are there limited bee mushrooms? Hold on, now I'm sort of very confused. Uh. Yeah, I think I need the bee mushroom, so I'm gonna die. The level is short, but maneuvering bee Mario without a drop shadow proved to be troublesome. I think I dip, and then I suck back up, and now I'm at the screen. Oh no! Oh, I, I ground pounded. I tried to pop the bubble, but the bubble popped like a frame after I hit the Z button, or be frame before I hit the Z button. So instead, I ground pounded, because the pop the bubble and the ground pound button are the same button. After suffering eight deaths or so, I decided to move on with our adventure, and I opted to check out the kitchen and its third set of galaxies. It's tropical, it's breezy, and how hard could it be, right? Beach Bowl is a nice change of pace from what we've seen so far. We're going for sunken treasure today, guys. Get comfy. I have an energy drink. I have a Wiimote and Nunchuck. This is pink, which is pretty cool, I think. Uh, my nunchuck, in fact, is just a regular boring old white nunchuck, though. Uh, you know, kind of like me. Back in grade school, they called me the white nunchuck. I don't know what I'm talking about. How is this difficult? What do I do here? No hurry scurry today. Well, you know, I just... I, we have 25 stars. I mean, there's so many other options. Like, you know, I don't want to ruin my entire day by doing that galaxy. Not, Not right now. There's five of them. Thanks, buddy. That's so helpful. 
And there's no hidden chest right there that goes to a secret galaxy. Now taking notice. Zero deaths for our 26th star of the run. Passing the swim test proves to be equally as trivial. And despite suffering a death from exploring the undersea cavern just a little too early, uh, I deliver the golden shell to the instructor, no problem for our 28th star. All right, let's uh, do the third star and then maybe we'll go back for the gold. Now, despite this galaxy's first two stars being non-issues, the third star here proves to make up for the lackluster levels that I just accomplished. After traversing through the undersea cavern, I make my way to the stone cyclone. The biggest change in this level is the addition of silver stars, reminiscent of the Galaxy 2 level which reuses the cyclone. However, these stars are in much less convenient places than Galaxy 2's cyclone. I'm pretty sure I need to be on top of him to get that star. I don't think I can triple jump this. You know what, like how on earth do I get that height? Can I get up there please? You stupid prick. Oh my god. Oh, what? No! That was it. I think that was it. That felt right. But was I not high enough? Like that? Like, what kind of... Oh my god! I think we're unlocking tech. <laughs> I think we've become a real pioneer. I'm dead. <laughs> the first four silver stars are difficult to get, but not nearly as difficult as this fifth and final silver star. Oh my god, it's a long jump! No! It's a long jump from the top of that thwomp. Okay. This silver star requires me to use the momentum of the thwomp rising to carefully long jump over the void. Grabbing the star isn't so bad, it's the landing that proves to be problematic. No! Dude, it's right... Oh my god. Oh, come on. It felt so good. It's right there. Oh, my goodness. Ugh, dude. So, it's over, like, the black hole. It's not over that stone. So, I have to, like, I have to go more right while also being able to, like, curve myself in. So, it's just hard. Did I not update the death counter? Oh, God. Are we at 299? That doesn't sound right. Don't flip me! There we go! Don't kill me! What the? I, I, I DBZ instant transmission. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Oh! Oh! Lean. Lean. Spin. Lean. Oh, I'm so over the... Oh my god, I'm over it. Oh my god, I'm so over the... Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. All right. Oh, that felt okay, but I don't... I'm leaning left. I'm so dead, there's no way. There's no way I'm dead, right? Yeah, I'm so dead. Barely scraping by the teeth of that tox box, can we see a victory from our Italian plumber here today, folks? Only at the cyclone spinning water... Fall black hole galaxy of death. And he's gotten the second star, folks. Rounding the ring, he grabs his third silver star, making it up to the double tox box section. The tox boxes do have the capability to one shot Mario. A dangerous, dangerous situation. Stink strategy, purposely leaving the fourth star on the course. Well, half, I've never seen anything like it. Seems like he's gonna go for the fifth star. Fourth through the double tox box section, slowly making his way, tailing the second tox box, waiting for his pathway. Does he see it? He clears it, folks. Now this jump separates the boys from the men. The bit isn't that important, you're wrong. The bit is all, all important because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, Mario coming back with the fifth star fourth, making sure he does not get caught up in the tox box's path, rounding his way back through the course, he looks to gain that fifth star. Not a lot of time here. This platform with the question mark block, the tox boxes cannot pass. 
Not gonna take any chances. No need for any risky jumps here from Mario. Toxbox to pass him overhead as he grabs his fifth and final Silver Star. Ladies and gentlemen, the Beach Bowl Galaxy. The star has appeared at the very beginning of our course. Like, I really don't want to die. <laughs> After a long and arduous process, eventually I retrieve the fifth star successfully and grab the 28th star of the game 33 deaths later. But unfortunately, the stone cyclone wasn't quite done with me yet. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh. Okay. Alright. Wait, do I only need to get to the end or do I need to get the start? Oh, and there's the stars. Okay, we need to get the stars. Is there a time limit? There's not. How am I gonna do this part? Dude, there's no way. There's no way. This is hard. This is gonna be so hard. Despite being exactly the same as the secret undersea cavern star, the sped up enemies and non-stop frantic music make this level an absolute nightmare to complete. Stop, change the camera back. Oh my God. It's just, I lean a little bit to the right. Oh no, it's just. I slid on him. I didn't get the chance to wall jump. Okay. Fire up a new set of batteries and then check how full they are. Oh my God. We got full battery, folks. We're back. We're here. 99 lives. So many of the Silver Stars required me to use Tox Boxes and Thwomps to reach them. And these small windows proved to be really tough to hit consistently. On top of this, the momentum of these sped up enemies have the capability of just launching Mario straight into the stratosphere. Am I actually having fun? Yeah. So much fun. Except for the fact that this jump is not fun. This jump makes me feel like the world will never, ever find peace. What? Play that back. Play that back. Play it back. I just... Fine. Come on! Hold. Hold. I'm not looking at you at all, chat. I'm sorry. I'm not looking at you. I'm not looking at you. I'm just, I'm straight up not gonna look at you. I don't need any he throws, odds he throws here. I don't need any of that. Okay. Is this gonna go to the orange box or is this going back to the start? If I have to do another momentum jump, I'm gonna scream oh my god 88 lives later oh finally i made it out with our 29th star huh. 
Oh my god, how was <laughs> We played that level for like three hours, bro. That one jump took so much out of me. That was hard. That was not an easy one. Okay, and we're moving on. Hurry scurry? Yeah, okay. In what world do I turn on hurry scurry after three hours of that? Over to Ghostly Galaxy. And Ghostly Galaxy has some of the most interesting changes to its progression, and in order to save Luigi from this mansion, I'm gonna have to get creative. There's a key right there? Bro, what in the f***ing world? I'm supposed to get to that key? With this? Oh no. 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 No, sorry. Let me think about this real quick. I thought about it real quick. How? Where is it? Is that an actual platform? Or is that... That's Boulder Guy Serena, and it's very far away, actually. Luigi is the haunted mansion. Like, it has its own gravity. Like, that's great, right? But how do I get there? I thought the pull stars to get back. Is the pull star to get over there? Oh my god, how am I gonna do that? This pull star momentum cancel is a really difficult trick. I'm forced to perform three times in a row just to make it over to the key that unlocks the rest of the level. Oh my god, by the time the pull star registers me, the death plane already kills me. Basically, you have to grab the pull star with the Wiimote cursor, pop the bubble with the Z button, spin, grab the star again, rinse, and repeat. Motion controls combined with precise inputs make this one of the deadliest sections in the entire game. The death plane here is just so unbelievably close to where you're supposed to be maneuvering Mario that even the slightest error can have you plummeting to your death. Even if you perform the cancel quickly and effectively, if Mario is close enough to this plane, he'll be pulled down before you can even re-grab the blue star. Ghostly Galaxy is where the Kaizo part of Kaizo Galaxy really ramps up. I know I need to spin with the nunchuck or it would be helpful to, but muscle memory is telling me that the Wiimote is going to be the play. And after dying over and over and over again, finally I make it to the purple planet. Oh, baby! Okay, now what? All right. How do I get back without dying? Yep, I have to get back to the mansion from there, which is just a tough ask. Please tell me the key saves. Oh, you stupid. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Nice. Okay. Yes! Ho! Oh, hold! Hold! Don't die! Finally, after making it back with the key, the rest of the level offers little difficulty, and Luigi gives me the 30th star of the run, placing us halfway to Bowser. You guys did want me to go to Beach Bowl. So we'll try to do the hidden star here. Ideally, it's not that hard. I return to Beach Bowl Galaxy for the secret star, because frankly, I was tired of the ghostly galaxy's shenanigans, and I encounter an issue. See, the golden chest is at the top half of the level, and in order to get the golden shell there, I have to triple jump, double wall jump up and out of the secret cavern. Once you get past a certain point of this jump, a black hole spawns giving me only one try, per shell collected. 
Oh! No! Thankfully, I only died once to the cheesy black hole implementation. Oh, I'm up! Oh, I'm up! Oh, I need to triple jump into the throw. I understand. Oh, that's gonna be... And if I miss, it's botched, and I have to restart the entire thing. This is a do-or-die moment, folks. And after absolutely sniping the golden chest, I'm able to make it to the level in question, Woo! while jumping up waterfalls. Like and subscribe! And I have to do this without the cataquax entirely. Uh, okay. This section was definitely made tougher. The lack of cataquax makes retrieving the star slightly more bothersome, but some parkour and smart jumps net me my 31st star. Nice. Okay. <sighs> that was the beach ball galaxy. Continue on with ghostly, guys? You guys feeling a little spooky? We can do some spooky stuff. Hey, wait, Luigi! Or do we go save Luigi? There are three Luigi rescue missions in the game, and the first one is in Good Egg Galaxy. Here's a clip of this star from the vanilla game. Yep, it's that easy. Where's Luigi and Kaizo, you might ask? Well, I'm not sure. I guess I gotta go looking for him. This seems like a Luigi-ish planet, right? He could be over there. He could be in that pipe. He's totally in that pipe. Wait, no way. I have to do that from the other planet? Oh my God, okay. Just absolutely horrendous for the program, guys. Nobody wants, no, nobody wants this. Okay, so that's that. That means that a mini star spawns under here, apparently. It does, it's right there, very good. Eventually, I realize that I need to bring the bullet bills from one planet to break a glass cage on an entirely other planet, and I suffer two deaths attempting this. Okay, good start. What the actual hell is this? There's Luigi. Hi. What's up, dude? Finally, Luigi in tow, I grab the 30-second star of the game. And now it's time for... A very spooky spirit. This level is a doozy. Let's start with a race, guys. How's everybody doing today? Happy Wednesday, midweek. Mario must race Boo through this track of pull stars, chunks of cooked meat, and various human remains. Is that a pelvis? Get to the end of the course before Boo does, and you get the star. Sounds easy enough, right? Oh, I straight up. Okay, well. Boy, let me tell you, this level is arguably the most punishing I've done yet, as even the tiniest slip up can spell death for the attempt. This stinks. Just time me out and kill me already. Mario has to get to the goal within a minute and 10 seconds. On top of that, if I don't finish the course, the timer continues to run until the two minute mark. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, woohoo! Practice before doing the real thing? That doesn't even make sense. You don't practice a gym fight before going into the gym leader. This isn't Mario Party. And even if it was, we don't practice. We hit the start button. You don't know the controls? Skill issue. Get good. Now, this wouldn't be so bad, but the trickiest parts of the spooky sprint are at the very beginning of the race and the very end of the race, meaning that so many of my attempts might just die in the first 10 seconds of race time or right around that minute and 10 second goal. Oh, geez. Oh, come on. Dude, I can't. I. <laughs> what do I do? It was a great run, but like, how do I get to this pull star? Like, now I can do it, right? because I just reset my position. And I need to do that like constantly. I need to have enough time and enough of a lead to be able to do that constantly. Unless he gives me the star right now, but I think I need to beat him, right? Yeah, okay. Do I just need to get over 130 or do I need to win? Okay, I need to win. <laughs> yeah, he's already finished. Dude, he takes, it's like a minute and 10 seconds he finishes in. Right around this section, he starts to just gain just so much freaking speed on us. <laughs> New record by two seconds, PB'd. 
RNG meat manipulation. Yo, me <laughs> Yo, I got meat skip? Unbelievable. So you have some options once you realize your attempt is over. You either find a way to kill yourself to try again earlier. You can return to the observatory and have to play through the beginning section, which also features a pretty tight jump you can die on, or you just sit there and wait the full two minutes until Boo finally puts your attempt out of its misery. Good old Illinois US. See, Netherlands is, that's a dope answer. Netherlands is inoffensive, you know? If I say I'm from the US, there's like a million different assumptions about me you can already make, right? I do love fried food. I am absolutely for having my hamburger bun be made of donuts. I don't own any guns though, I will say that. I'm not representing my country in that way. I like food and freedom and the beach. That's all I want. That is some forward thinking policy right there. You should run for governor of a small Midwestern state. Why does Boo kind of look like the governor of a small Midwestern state? It's the helmet, it's totally the helmet. It's like he posted that on social media to like help his campaign a little bit, you know, like, hey, I'm a, I'm a, a speedster myself. This is what I do in my free time. And you're like, all right, boo, I'll see you in the primaries, you know, like you really think you're going to convince the voters just because you have a cool motorcycle helmet. What about your policy, boo? This is not the spooky sprint anymore. This has become far too political. It's not me. It's boo. Boo's the one bringing up all these hot topics and issues. Okay. I'm just trying to get our school lunches. <laughs> Back to the normal. Is there a way for me to realign myself at the beginning to get that second star more consistently? The camera angle makes it so whack. Like, if I go... Yeah. Because it changes. As soon as you get off this little step, it changes. And then it no longer is in view. Because, like, here, this is the only spot where I can, like, long jump while still having this in the camera. If I slightly step off of this, the camera has now changed and I cannot access that pole star. So I need to long jump from here to keep the camera as consistent as possible just to be able to grab the pole star. <laughs> what party do you think Boo is? We don't need to talk about it. We know what party. For those of you not involved in US politics, good for you. For those of you who are here to just watch a Mario Galaxy Kaizo stream, you're in luck, because that's what we're doing. So I was here for a long time. And after 31 attempts at this, I decided to put a pin in our race with Boo, and instead go for the secret star in Ghostly Galaxy. And upon arriving, just like Rocky Road... <laughs> okay, this is gonna suck a lot. This is gonna suck a lot a lot. Matter Splatter Mansion is another level that mandates I use the Spring Mushroom. What the? Why that way? Okay, I guess we're going the other way. That's right. You thought Rocky Road and the Sweet Mystery Galaxy was bad, but Matter Splatter proves to be the deadliest level in the game thus far. While not nearly as hard as painting the planet yellow, it is very easy to die as Spring Mario. I'm gonna stop right there. Stop, please. Please, why bounce that way? One slight miscalculation or odd bounce and Mario's just gonna plummet to his death. Okay, here we go. Oh, Mario, no! Oh, wow. That is still the furthest we've gotten! <laughs> We're alive still. Do I need to, wait, what the hell? Is there a collision that I'm not certain of? What's going on here? Well, what if we just put Mario in a spring? What do you think of that, Mr. Miyamoto? Oh, I don't know. Send it. I'm too focused on pick me. The trickiest part of the level is easily this beginning part with the first question mark coin, which activates the second Matter Splatter track, and the ending section, where once again, Kaizo Galaxy just throws the rules completely out of the window. Wait, I just was flat for a second. What the hell?
The ways that Spring Mario interacts with both walls and ceilings makes the climb to the star almost entirely unpredictable. Sometimes I'd get caught on walls. Sometimes I'd fall through floors and ceilings. Sometimes I would collide with invisible floors and ceilings. And then there was this one time I probably died more than I should have in the Matter Splatter Mansion, but eventually I got my act together and strung together a run that finally put Mario in the position he needed to be in order to finally grab the 33rd star of the game. I died a total of 98 times in that one level, making it quote unquote the deadliest level thus far. That took so long. It took way longer than it needed to. That level was not that difficult. We just kept getting screwed by the spring mushroom, bro. Hey guys, are we gonna go back to the ghostly galaxy? Should we do buoy base? Should we do uh, bubble breeze? The speedster's gonna be tough. I do, I listen, I could use me some buoy base. Cause this music goes crazy. Also, it's probably gonna suck. How bad could Bubble Breeze be? I bet they got rid of the bubbles. I bet you just have to parkour the entire level. Instead of going back to Boo, my chat wanted me to try out Booey Base Galaxy, where I was in for another very rude awakening. See, my patience had been slowly whittled down by the two stars in Ghostly Galaxy. Between Boo and the Matter Splatter Mansion, I was pretty over it. But upon arriving in Booey Base, I came face to face with one of the most inexplicably difficult jumps in the entire game. The idea is to backflip wall jump spin off the side of this bump to get on top of it, and then execute a triple jump spin wall jump spin in order to make it up to the actual base. That sounds simple enough, right? Well, there are a total of three complications that make this much harder than it appears. The primary complication is that you have a very tight window to execute this triple jump once you're on top of the bomb, as once it starts receding back into the wall, good luck being able to get a triple jump off because the ground moves and Mario's momentum can be halted, oftentimes leading to straight up not even executing the third jump. It is possible to get the triple jump off as the bomb moves back, but the camera exacerbates this momentum issue even further. The secondary complication is that once you do finally execute the triple jump during that tight window, you have to spin and wall jump off the side of the base. If you're too close to the base when you spin, you'll spin back off the wall and get sent all the way back down, forcing you to swim and jump just to get back to the bomb to try again. You're very close to the base after the triple jump because there's not a lot of room, so you have to be far enough back to have room to spin. The third and most minor complication is the Octagai, shooting rocks at Mario from right where you're supposed to land. He hardly ever actually messes with your jump, but his squeaking and constant rock spitting just really wore on me during this section. Guess what would happen if we blew up that underwater weight? Come on, guess. Give up? Okay, great. So let's let's just take a peek for those of you uninitiated, right? This is the down under of Bowie Base, okay? This is the weight we're supposed to uh, quote unquote blow up with uh, these torpedo bills that should spawn, but they don't. So the only way up the place is by jumping. I'm not doing this level anymore. I don't give a sh I decided to put a pin in Bowie Base. And after giving a couple more of my lives to Boo. And I can't grab that one either. So I don't want to do either of these two stars. Let's try out the Bubble Breeze. Yup, yup, no bubbles. No bubbles in Bubble Breeze. Over in Bubble Breeze and through the Poison Swamp follows Kaizo Galaxy's trend of taking away the level's namesake. 
In this instance, the bubbles that you use to traverse the level. Dude, the camera's gonna drive me crazy. Instead, small bricks have been added to the level, making this just another galaxy where tight jumps are required and one small slip up, you're back to the beginning. No, you, no, 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 I was on top of it. Oh yeah, this is Kaizo. If the camera keeps bugging out like this, I'm gonna freak. How do I get over here? Is it just a long jump? All right. Where is the star? It's up there? Oh, wow. It's around the corner. I have to go back the other way. How many stars this stream so far? A single star. No! No, you stupid. Eventually, after failing to make it all the way through the toxic bog, I end the stream out of pure exhaustion. Imagine streaming Mario Galaxy for six hours straight, and all you have to show for it is a single star earned. Some people beat the entire game in that amount of time. Boo mocked me with his speed. Matter Splatter Mansion frustrated me with just the sheer lack of rules. Booey Base straight up had one jump that I could not execute after an hour, and the Poison Swamp finally suffocated what little drive I had left. Oh, see you later. I'm dead. Cool. Ugh. Oh, dude, I put these batteries in yesterday night. What do you mean? These are new batteries. They were full. Y'all remember. I had it uh, paused on the Wii menu and everything. <sighs> Am I dead from that? That's so fun. I think that that's where I'm going to call it for the day, guys. At 4 20, 40. 62 lives on the docket. We got one star. I don't want to stream anymore. I don't know. I need my, my hands need a break. But of course... That's not where the story ends. And a day later, I got to work. Through the poison swamp. First on the list was Bubble Breeze. There's no breezes. There's no bubbles. This is just the galaxy. This is the Mario galaxy of all time. This is some excruciatingly tough platforming and required a ton of blind jumps and memorization as the camera, as usual, mostly didn't cooperate. The first section with the launch star chips is difficult, but somehow not nearly as bad as the second section with the blue star chips. I'm just gonna have to like early. Oh no. Oh no, that's gonna stink. The first three are fairly self explanatory, and outside of some meticulous jumps, they're not so bad. But the fourth and the fifth star chips are really where it all falls apart. Like, I can't tell if that's a backflip or if it's a triple jump. I think it's a triple jump. Oh, what the? Was I over it? I was over it. That's wild. So you gotta get on top of this spinning gate, which is already much, much harder than it looks. You can't wall jump off the gate, and Mario's character readjusts itself automatically, completely without the player's control. I mean, look at this. Just look at this tiny little clip right here. Look at Mario's spin. This is garbage. This, this doesn't make sense. Then, you have to time a backflip or a triple jump just right to not only get the star chip, but land back on top of the gate. No, that, what the f*** was that? Oh my god. <laughs> the batteries, dude, the batteries kill me. Remember, you can't wall jump. If you miss, you hit the sludge and you die. Dude, okay. 
What do I do about any of this? Can I get on top of this? Do I have to backflip on top of it? I can't, I know I can't wall jump it. The fifth blue star chip is a doozy as well. No, 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 no. Like, uh, what do I do? I, I can't change the camera at all. I can't wall jump. If I jumped here and spun, would I be able to grab this ledge? I don't think so. Well, actually, you know what I can do? Uh, even if it may not be maybe exactly optimal. Okay, look, 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 look. Ready, ready, ready? I'm down here. Okay, it is, it's very close to the top. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I can't really get back up there. I'm not exactly close enough. So I need to do that in one try. No. No! It's telling me I have no batteries. But I have batteries. I'm moving in circles. Watch me shoot a star bit. Oh, why can't I shoot any star bits? I can't jump either. So my Wiimote's dead. But the nunchuck is still letting me do things. That's so bizarre. Oh, that felt nice. It felt nice. It's hard to know what my verticality looks like when the camera is top down like this, though. Oh, okay. I mean, it feels good. It feels good. Please, Mario, get back up there. Oh my god, you absolute genius! Wait, 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 wait. No f way I have to... I was starting to get sloppy, and if I didn't lock in, I could end up bouncing between galaxies with no success like the entirety of the session before. No! I'm... Uh, what? But... That wasn't gonna happen. Hey, at least we've gotten to that section now. At least we know, okay? Knowledge is power, guys. Read a book. But Hef, you can get knowledge from watching internet videos too. That's right, now you know how to beat this level. Aww. That was me. Listen, our, our success rate has been better though. We have not missed the fourth star chip one time since we discovered how to best get it. It is a backflip kind of landing spin type deal as the platform rotates. Dude, can you imagine if we actually made that simple long jump, we would have maybe like finished the level out? We were actually that close to victory. Oh, did I bump the wall? No, I didn't. Okay. <gasps> oh, don't scare me like that. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. No! Oh. Uh... Come on, show me the next one. There we go. 77 lives lost in the poison swamp, but the 35th star of the run was mine. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, that was a lot. Now, guys, do we race Boo? I stopped by Boo for a couple lives to let him know that I'm not quite done with him. Oh my god. F*** you, Boo. Dude! I'm too high on progress. I don't want to do that. And blast off once again to Booey Base, determined to make that jump. Luckily, a chatter lets me know not to even attempt the jump until I grab the first blue star chip that's hidden before I even make it up to the base. Wait, what? You can go into the water from the outside of the base? And it's a glass now? <laughs> Wait, what? It can't just selectively be water and then selectively be glass. You get to choose one or the other game. Do we think it's on the bottom level? Because even if I run straight, I still can get, like, clipped by the water like that. Yep, yep, because it'll adjust me automatically. I... What the f... Is that a star down there? As soon as we figure out where it is... You gotta hear it. Dude, what the f... It's right to the left here. Wait, but I die. I die if I go down any farther than this. Or I don't? After grabbing the star chip, and after another 15 minutes or so of attempting to make the buoy base triple jump, and after this... 
I finally make it on the tower where the rest of the level falls neatly into place. Ah! Don't hit me! Don't touch me! Ha ha ha! Stupid Octagoomba ass. Ah! Squish! Ah! Ha ha ha! All right. So welcome to Bowie Base. Let's not die or fall off. The remaining blue star chips are hidden pretty well, but all in all, I conquer the floating fortress with only two lives lost while trying to get that first blue star chip. And we've done it. I should have gotten all the rest of the star bits, but it's okay. That jump sucked. I stand by it. I know I was salty about the jump. I stand by that jump being just ungodly unfair. I'm not quite done with Bowie Base though. I thought that now would be the best time to grab the green star, as I'm as practiced with this jump as I'm ever gonna be. Fuck. That stupid Octorak. I'm gonna squish him. It did take about another 15 minutes or so, but I made it all the way back up to the top of the base and opened up the Pokeball. After that, I got to descend back down to the underbelly of the base in the water. Okay. We're below. I know that's gonna be horrible. I know, I'm sorry. I know we just, we took a while to get back up. But now we can actually work on the Torpedo Teds. Finally, the warp pipe opened up and it led me straight to the green star. And so, zero lives lost, I claim the 36th star of the run. We're never doing that jump ever again. Never again. I was on a roll with cleaning up some of these galaxies, so I decided to give a very sticky situation in Sligpod an honest try. This little part with the fire bar might be one of the trickiest landings in the entire game. Not difficult necessarily, but just deceiving. Oh, oh my god, it was I was way higher up than I thought I was. Every life lost here just stung. You know, just a little bit. Dude, it's so hard. I don't think it could be understated how important a drop shadow is in determining Mario's position, as when you're jumping, or in this case buzzing, over the infinite darkness of space, it is not so easy to tell where you're going or where you are. Dude, it's so hard! It's so hard to land on that middle block. Anyway, Kaizo Mario Galaxy, here in the Sling Pod Galaxy, now you may notice that a big theme of Kaizo Mario Galaxy is taking the name of the galaxy and completely removing everything having to do with the name of the galaxy from said galaxy. For instance, this is Slingpod Galaxy. There are no Slingpods in sight at all. Instead, we're B-Mario. No, B-Mario. B-Mario! B-Mario! In previous attempts, you've let us down, B-Mario. How could you? It's so hard, dude. Regardless, after a little perseverance and a leap of faith, I grab the 37th star and get myself out of a very sicky situation with only 28 lives lost here overall. Whew. Back in the observatory, I swear to God if Luigi's in Battle Rock... Ah. Luigi's once again in trouble, and this time it's in Battle Rock. I really didn't want to have to come back here after the hell it had put me through with both the gravity and the bub bomb shenanigans, but here we are. Luigi's not under the saucer he usually is, as I suspected. I will break the first star, because that could be a, a flag. Maybe I have to go back now? I don't even know if I can get back to that gravity. The dev said I have to die? Wait, no way. Oh, wait, no, he did. Wait, I have to die, really? I'll trust you. If the dev lied to me, guys, I end the stream. Oh, this entire endeavor to get over here is pointless, and I should go back to the observatory when you say I should die. Death 687, the developer is responsible for. Let it be known, myself editing this in four months, I don't know. 687. Great Waluigi told me to die. And as it turns out, you have to maneuver Mario using slope jumping to the complete other side of the battle rock. Where is it? Like, technically, can I get to it? 
No! Really? 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 I didn't even know you could go this way, or make it this far, but hey, here we are. Once I make it to the Sling Star, however, Luigi, I'll save you, buddy. Luigi reveals himself, and the second green star and 38th star overall of the run is mine, only losing nine lives in the process. Back to business. We're gonna win this election. I open the stream with a few more attempts to beat the spooky speedster, but to no avail. Not now, not today, boo. Not so spooky now, are you, you speedster? Ah, ah, ah. All right, no meat, no meat, no meat. No meat, stop with the meat. Oh, what the hell? I will kill you. <laughs> I don't need voters. I'm, dude, I already botched it. All right, let's go somewhere else. Let's not do this election deal. It was time to take on the Bowser level, sinking the airships. The idea is to shoot airship to airship using the cannons and launch stars to collect five blue star chips. The only problem is, is that it is very easy to get lost in the airship armada. Okay, so if we bonk on this, we die. So I'm gonna try to bonk on the further back tower instead, and not this early one. Let's find out if we got it. Okay. Least favorite level on the hack? What the f was that? I don't know, but f oh, wow, you're kidding. Okay, all right, we know what the goal is. All of the ships look identical. You can't control the camera at all, and having to launch yourself with cannons proves problematic because of the death penalty Mario gets hit with after being airborne for too long. The worst part was easily having to restart the whole process over again once dying. We have four out of five pieces, but I don't know where the fifth one is. I imagine I just gotta get to a specific cannon, but I don't know which cannon it is. I don't think we've made this shot before, so I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yep, all right, goodbye. It's been fun. Out of curiosity. Curiosity killed me, right? There's not, I don't think there's a star piece down there, though. It's on this planet. I can't get there, though. Watch, ready? It's right there. I didn't even, that's a death plane, straight up. All right, fine. We're going, we're going for it. We're balling out. We're balling out here. Wahoo, this is fun. I love this. Sure. All right. Fifth star chip. Good. I don't know where. Oh, look at this lovely camera. Oh, so good. After enough trial and error and collecting all of the star chips, I'm told something that absolutely blew my mind. Can you pull star yourself out of a launch star? You can? Dude, that's nuts. No way. I've never seen anything like that before. <gasps> no way. Oh my god. That's so crazy. This Bowser Jr. fight also proves to be the most heavily edited boss fight in the entire game, as the Koopas you're supposed to use as ammunition are no longer walking the deck of the ship. I actually have some confusion. How do I fight you? Is there something hidden in here? There is. This is the hidden little compartment. Oh! Hello! Oh no, what the- Oh no! Oh no no no! No, Mario! No, Mario! How do I- <laughs> How do I run?! How do I get out of here? Oh no, I could just come up here, but I can't. it's one way? So I can only jump up it. I can't go down it. It is not like explodable. The boo is simply there as a hazard. That's right. I have to enter the hull of the ship, grab a Koopa shell, avoid a bomb boo, perform a tight triple jump, double wall jump with the shell back up to Bowser Jr. and then hit him. I have to do that a total of five times in order for the boss to finally go down. I discover that I can bait the Bamboo toward the slide in order to deload him and prevent him from being an issue overall as I'm trying to attempt the jump. Oh, he's right there! Ah, he was spawn camping me! <laughs> That's what I deserve for putting him there. Very good, Mario. One more. Or maybe not. 
Oh no, it could be three. Is it three and three or is it two more? That's such an ordeal. Finally, after losing a total of 28 lives here, most of them just from shooting around the airships, I smacked Bowser Jr. with the final green shell and grabbed the third grand star of the game and my 39th star overall. This unlocks the bedroom, which has my personal favorite set of galaxies, including my all-time favorite, Freeze Flame, which we head to immediately to conquer the frozen peak of Baron Burr. I have a feeling this isn't going to be so bad. I have a feeling that these galaxies are just going to get a little easier. And I'm not going to eat my words on that. We've done some toughies so far. I think we've gotten a good chunk of difficult stars out of the way. Now, I can't get up the peak the traditional way as Ice Mario, since, of course, the ice flower's been taken away from us. Thanks, Kaizo Galaxy. We've got to climb the mountain, and there's only one way up. Slope jumping. Finally up at Baron Burr, he almost pulls one over on me. Is he going to kill me and I'm going to have to do that again? Please don't make that happen. But I defeat him and grab the 40th star of the game. Zero lives lost in the process. Don't go anywhere crazy. Very good. Oddly enough, the first Freeze Flame Comet spawns now, and so I shoot back in to tackle the Frosty Cosmic Mario race. This proves to be a little tricky, as the course has been altered to include much more fire, and much less ice. This is also where I learned that Mario can actually long jump while skating, being able to cover a ridiculous distance. You're lying, that's a thing? That... Okay. Well, now we have tech, so now we know. Oh no! No! Okay. No! No! I can't even fathom. The one part where gravity shifts is totally outrageous, but 22 deaths later, the 41st star is mine. Is it is it a jump here? It feels okay. Hold on. Okay, we're fine. All right. Off to Freeze Flame's blistering core. I get absolutely lost for a while. Did, does this accomplish anything? Did, did that accomplish something? Am I going the right way? Can I get further up like this? Is there something that this does? It releases a bunch of spiky guys, right? But that's that's about all, correct? Oh god, there's so many of them. Oh my god, oh my god! And just like the very beginning of the game, I just so happen to die in a convenient enough location where I hit a checkpoint and respawn in the second section of the level. Where am I now? Oh wait, I made it? All right, sure. Now I have to lead these stupid fucks over here. Oh, that is just not something I want to do at all. Guiding these little cinders, yes, that's what they're called, little cinders, isn't that cute? Proves to be kind of tricky. I gotta aggro them to follow Mario and light the goblets and be able to survive afterwards long enough to grab the star. Getting Little Cinder to the first goblet isn't that hard, but getting him to the second without dying was definitely a challenge. Oh, he's he's out he's out of frame. No, come back. <sighs> and he's still in the frame. You're still in the frame. Come over here, bro. No way. No way. I'm not gonna get hit by him. No way I get hit by him. Nice. Still aggroed. Oh, let's absolutely go. Once I do get that second goblet lit, however, I obtain the 42nd star of the game, eight deaths later. Freeze Flame's final level, Hot and Cold Collide, is pretty tame by Kaizo's standards. It's, it's gonna make us do the parkour to get out, which I think I usually do normally? Yeah. Just like the Frosty Cosmic Mario race, I'm put back on the racetrack, although this time there are way less tiles overall, and most of it is lava. What? I'm forced to go as fast as I can, racing against the Ice Flower's timer, and of course, gravity continues to be a thorn in my side. Uh, no way. Do I have to wait for the flower to run out? Mm, I kind of doubt it. Also, what? I don't know. 
Maybe? <laughs> okay, well... I'm an addict to frame-perfect jumping. I'm an addict! But eventually, I lock in and get a great run, only losing 10 lives for the 43rd star. I'm an addict! I'm addicted! Oh, wowee, that was, <laughs> that was stressful. But hell yeah. <laughs> One more time back to Freeze Flame for the secret star, conquering the summit. And let me tell you, this one puts the rest of the levels in the galaxy to shame. Ugh, it gets tiring, bro. Ugh, holy sh**. Okay. Let's do the level. Oh, f Please tell me I respawn up here. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you for not having me to have to do the freaking slope jumping again. Is that another blue star chip? Hold on. Oh, we lost the... We lose the blue star chips. I did not even notice. I have to go get the... Oh, I have to do the slope jumping again. This one's got to be one of the most physically intensive levels of the entire game. As if you die, you lose the first blue star chip you collect at the base of the mountain and are forced to slope jump all the way back up to Baron Burr's arena just to make it over to the Slink Star again to try to climb the rest of the mountain. Uh, this is not the direction I want to be sliding. This is not the direction at all. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I can't believe we hit that first try then. And it starts me <laughs> right back at the beginning, sliding into the Freeze Flame Galaxy. Congratulations, Mario. You spent all that time, you went up and down Everest, but... <sighs> Here you are at the very bottom once again. You can kind of tell when you're eligible to spin because of the type of jump Mario does. I don't... It's like a subtle thing with his animation, I think. So you have to slide down, right? jump away from the wall and hold the direction of down first like at first otherwise you do one of those like kind of fake spins but like you see him kind of like kick out a little bit and that absolutely should have registered a spin like a hundred million days of the week motion controls do not belong i'm a sunshine supremacist i'm sorry <laughs> get me up there don't don't make me go a whole nother round of this to do this every time there's no ice flower here so this is absolutely mandatory every single attempt I'm going down the no baron burr baron burr you prick no you're serious oh no bro come on come on come on i have a lot of incentive not to die here so of course i end up dying about nine times trying to conquer the summit no Takes so much work just to get yeah see like yeah great i'm here it's awesome but it doesn't matter because we have to go back down because of the star chips anyway so the attempt is already bunk and i actually bonked again so that's eight actually can i go this way you can't even go this way even a little bit dude even a little bit i gotta go like all the way up top just to get down it's crazy if i long jump this way i end up back in fair fair territory unless i bonk and do something so bizarre and and um yeah that duh oh you guys didn't know about that that's the um mario galaxy tech uh i discovered mm, mountain bonking teleportation M mbt the mountain bonk teleport skip bounce oh great bounce all right come on come on come on come on come on no no oh my god i'd rather i felt like that one was great but i still we still need to do this and still need to get up here and then spit two fireballs how do you have enough time for that also i don't think i ever realized that base mario can't do anything about the ice bats that parade the summit 
So you just kind of have to avoid them to varying levels of success. Go away, holy. I, I he still hurt me. He's gonna kill me. Get the freaking hell away from me. Go away, further down the mountain, out of sight, demon. Oh my god, we got both. He's coming closer to me! <laughs> Just stay away! Go away! Overall, the 44th star wasn't the most difficult, but it sure took me a lot of time and effort. Luckily, the next one's not so bad. We're gonna go this way. The giant eel outbreak in Drip Drop Galaxy is pretty simple once you know what to do. Drip Drop gives everyone trouble. More than likely gonna get stuck. We'll see. Oh, great. Fantastic. I'm so happy. Dude, are you serious? How many goddamn pufferfish can there be? Give me something. Give me a star piece. I'm dead. See you later. It's great. Good death. The green shell spawn has been moved to inside the sunken Toad Brigade ship. So once you get a torpedo Ted to explode the side of it, the rest of the level proves to be tedious, although mostly easy. Oh, it's a sh it is a shell. Good start. Let's um find an eel. Yeah, I have one health left though. So different window. Diff. Do oh. Okay. Sure. All right. Two health with a green shell in tow. We are hunting some eels. Let me tell you. I don't trust myself throwing it. I need to get, like, literally point blank to even attempt it, you know? No way, dude. See, like, what is that curve? I just don't... I just don't know. Yeah! Dude, it's crazy. It's so wild. I'm gonna literally get right next to your face so you can't say no. There you go. Right in the butt. Is that the star? Unfortunately, it did take me a bit to figure this out, and I ended up dying a total of three times before getting the 45th star of the run. Time for some bunnies in the wind. That's right, I'm off to Gusty Garden Galaxy, where things aren't much more dangerous than they are in vanilla. I'm just scared, guys. I'm, I'm nervous about what I'm missing and if we're gonna have to go back or if there's like star chips or something, okay? I don't have any trust anymore. Uh, that feels like that specifically murders me? It probably drags me to this planet, actually. Oh no, it does just specifically murder me. You know, that was my first thought, and then I reassessed the situation, and I thought, no, I think the gravity will pull me into the planet. I think it'll be okay. Got one over on me, Kaizo. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, that was our first death in Gusty Garden Galaxy. That was the only death we suffered for the star. Sure, there were some tight triple jumps and some gravity manipulations, but I've gotten accustomed to what Kaizo Mario Galaxy wants from me, so this one was a nice change of pace from the slog that was conquering the summit. 46 stars in, I'm headed right back to beat the dirty tricks of Major Burrows. There was only one life loss here, and honestly, it was kind of my bad for hopping on the umbrella flower thing without a solid plan. As it turns out, maybe Gusty Gardens is a little walk in the park. Same. Wednesdays, am I right? Major Burrows isn't bad at all, and I net myself the 47th star. Alright, be somewhere not ridiculous. That's perfect! Three stars? This stream? Three stars? Are we sure this is Kaizo still? Gusty Garden keeps gifting me with relatively easy levels. A far cry from some of the absolute nonsense over in the kitchen. Gusty Garden's Gravity Scramble is pretty much the same level, except a little tougher by the ending. Oh, oh god, oh! Okay, this way. This gravity got super scrambled, as Mario no longer latches onto this cylindrical-shaped planet, and instead can fall right past it into the black hole behind it. What are we talking about? Wait, what? What just happened? Okay, closer. Very true. Okay, dude, it stops me from going up there at all. Like, it just, it just pushes me down. So, okay, I'm on the ground now. That's it, sorta? Okay, we're alive at least. Oh, Mario! Oh wait, this is it? The level wasn't so bad, 
And only 10 deaths later, I grabbed star 48. Oh. Gusty Garden has been the nicest galaxy so far. Time for another comic. I head back in for Major Burrow's Daredevil run, where... I wonder if he makes us do the whole level. Yes. The answer is yes. We gotta do the whole level. Okay, great. Of course, I suffer an obligatory death at the hands of the Umbrella Flower things. Oddly, I've died exactly one time per level for this exact reason, but that's gonna be the only death I suffer here during this comet. Star 49's in the bag. Lastly in Gusty Garden is the Golden Chomp. Now normally, you're supposed to spawn a rainbow star before launching over to the planet with off the chain chomps, and rush over to bust open the golden one for a pretty quick and easy star. Well that's not exactly how this one plays out in Kaiser. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Once I flip that switch, a launch star spawns, and the forces of gravity begin to constantly pull on Mario, in a way that makes him incredibly hard to control. Mario! 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 I think it's game over, period. I don't think I can get back there, so... See you later! The further you get from the cylindrical planet that's generating the gravity, the harder it is to work with Mario. My narration can't even do this justice. The simple task of moving was made incredibly tedious, so I end up dying a lot here. Like, because it's like technically toward the camera, so down's not even down. Oh my god, okay, alright, alright. No! Okay, wait, wait, no, seriously? Unbelievable. <laughs> okay. Even if Mario survives a failed jump, you can't get back to the set of moving blocks, meaning you're locked out of the secret star entirely and have to restart. Missing the first wall jump is also pretty easy to do, meaning that I straight up lose before I even get to attempt to fight physics. It's just the physics engine, okay? We're just fighting against physics. I want you guys to know that down is like right on my, or it's, it's left on my uh, nunchuck. I have to be hitting left to go down essentially. And even then, it's still sort of not... It's sort, still sort of sending me off the thing. All of the forces that make Kaizo Galaxy infuriating come together here. The camera, the oddball gravity field, the intricate jumps, it's all here. No. No! 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 Okay, sure, fine. Why that way though? Dude, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Every other time a backflip goes into the wall, that's the one time it never does. I don't get it. Once I finally made that jump, the rest of the level fell right into place. Oh, oh Mario, is this the star? I cracked open the golden chomp and 43 lives burned in the scramble. I claimed star 50. After pulling my chat, they surprisingly wanted to check out Honey Climb Galaxy and its level, scaling the sticky wall. Oh, whoa, whoa, no, whoa. Hold on. You mean it's not active? It's fake? Huh? It's still telling me to go this way. After trying to do this level the intended way, which is certainly a tall order, one of my hive tells me about an exploit you can do as B Mario. Position Mario on a honeycomb straight up and down. Jump and spin the nunchuck immediately without touching the nunchuck. I sort of understand. All right, well, we'll, you know, be practicing and whatever. Oh, that's a lot of height. Oh, that's like, that's like a, oh, am I dead from that though? Hold up. Wow. That was so much height I died. First, you have to position B Mario completely vertical on one of those hexagonal honeys. And once you jump off, immediately shake the nunchuck to spin and hold the A button to hover without touching the control stick at all. If done correctly, B Mario shoots up with insane speed, making this level substantially easier. Absolutely just not so crazy tech. This is your Captain B Mario. We'll be at cruising altitude in approximately one second. Make sure seatbelts are on, phones are off. Allows me as the pilot to concentrate. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we've come at a cruising altitude. 
of 15,000 feet. And right here, we'll have to make a relatively difficult maneuver. Now, I remember you all signed a waiver prior to boarding this flight, so... You know, you knew it came with risks, and we've stuck the landing. After grabbing the question mark coin, the deactivated launch star on the first planet comes to life. And your task is to buzz B Mario all the way back there in order to finally launch to the last planet. I can totally... Oh! 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 Woo! Here we go, folks! This level was actually a lot of fun once I learned that B Mario tech, but unfortunately, scaling the sticky wall will be the last time I get to use B Mario in Kaizo Galaxy. 21 lives lost on the climb and 51 stars in the bag, it was time to go back to the bedroom for Dusty Dune Galaxy. Oh, what the hell was that? What is this? Soaring on Desert Winds was a challenging but relatively inoffensive level in Kaizo Galaxy's catalog of mean levels. There's some tricky parkour, and of course, the dark sand instantly kills Mario when he touches it, but only five lives lost, and I'm at 52 stars. Blasting through the sand is only slightly altered, except for the very end of the level. Can I long jump from the top of this thwomp to get to the middle section? I can, probably, but it doesn't accomplish anything, I don't think. Oh, yeah, okay, I do need to get on top of the thwomp. Never mind, of course I do. My intuition was correct. Oh my god, that is so much further than I thought it was. Is it really on the other side of the planet? It can't be. I hear it from here. Oh, wow. Ha. Ah. You're supposed to time your jump when the triple boxes return to their base position and use the momentum to launch Mario into the stratosphere. Wiggle, 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 bounce. Okay, maybe four wiggles from the ding. I gotta wiggle four times, and then I hit A. Doesn't the star have a speedrun combat as well? It might, which would be just horrible. And at that point, it's almost entirely up to fate. This definitely took a while to get a hang of, and landing on the star proved to be even tougher than actually generating the momentum in the first place. Okay, wait, hold on. No! Oh, it felt so clean! Aww. Finally, with a sigh of relief, I was able to land on the 53rd star, only suffering one death to the dark sand in the process. Bada bing! This has been a pretty leisurely stretch of levels, all things considered. Outside of the gravity scramble, Kaizo Galaxy, it's kind of let up a little bit on the gas. But all of that's about to change, starting with this next level. The first section, while challenging, is definitely a welcome change of pace. Climbing these blocks that usually sink into the sand is a neat twist, and even though one missed jump means you have to do the whole thing over, it's pretty rewarding when I finally get it right. The real pain comes from the titular sand castle itself. This level isn't exactly easy in Vanilla Galaxy, but its Kaizo Galaxy version really cranks it up a notch. The only thing changed is how fast the sand moves from point A to point B. But this increased speed has serious ramifications on the overall wonkiness of the camera and the types of jumps you have to make. Long jumping becomes almost mandatory to get through the sand castle. And within this tight pseudo 2D space, both bonking from long jumps and from spinning happen all the time. I mean, just listen to my pure frustration. I feel like Anakin Skywalker, bro. I hate this sand. I, you can't, I'm just holding left and it still won't work. I don't wanna do this level. I'm running into the wall. No, why that way, Mario? What, dude, I don't understand. Okay, just kill, just die. Just, just die. I'm gonna take a small three or four minute intermission. I'm gonna get some food in me. I'm like, I'm a living embodiment of a Snickers commercial, guys. Have, have a Snickers. You're not good at video games when you're hungry. I should get sponsored by Snickers. Do you guys think Snickers would sponsor me? That'd be awesome. Do candies have sponsors? M&Ms do. Snickers are, Snickers are Mars, aren't they?
No, why that way? Oh my god, the camera! Oh, oh it's just terrible. The blue switch here spawns a launch star at the top of the tower that shoots me over to the secret star. That's not what I'm going for right this second, but just keep that in mind for the future. I got so frustrated, I was forced to stop playing and pick the game back up during a different stream. I'm ar I already died, dude. This is gonna be not fun at all. I died a lot in the sun-baked sandcastle, a grand total of 58 times overall. But with my refreshed mind and on a really good run, I was able to grab star 54. That's not the level I'm frustrated with. I'm frustrated with the switch that we're gonna have to hit before to get to the star. <laughs> Next up is the Sandblast speedrun comment. And I come to a horrifying realization at what this level is asking me to do. No! I have to do the switch? At the end of this? Oh, that's right. I have to run the entire level as fast as I can. And if I miss the momentum jump, then I'm forced to do the whole thing over again. No! Dude! I got it the first try! It takes 30 seconds for the switch to go down. Homing gr spin ground pound. Oh, you're probably right, Thaddeus. Ooh, Thaddeus comes in with the freaking tech. Okay, wait. What was that? Oh, uh, okay. The timer counting down at the same time as the other timer counting down really put a wrench in that. Lock and load, Mario. Here we go. This button's gonna pop up, me and you are gonna sail to victory. The level could have taken a really long time and been one of the worst of the run, but luckily I was able to clutch up for the 55th star. Yes! I just, I didn't even want a ground pound. I didn't want a ground pound. I updated the death counter instinctively. <laughs> we got it that time. <laughs> I literally put 932. Once again, it's time for a little politics. My opponent will not get the best of me this time. Just when I thought I got out, they pulled me right back in. Boo thinks he can insult pineapple pizza. Boo's a meat lover's guy, clearly. Why does Boo need a helmet if he phases through walls? Uh, he hit his head when he was younger and his mom makes him wear it. And it's weird because that endears him to the voters somehow. Like as if this guy, this literal fossil, wearing a helmet is like cute or something. I visited the rundown communities that you chose to ignore during your time in office. Oh Jesus The meat. I hate this star. We were going fast. We were doing good. We were doing good. The meat, the meat lobby. <laughs> The meat lobby. Ho! Whew! You got me. That's good. That's solid. You guys are funny. Bro, the meat lobby? The meat packing industry? They're fully behind Boo. Why is the joke that this Boo's political? Well, we're in a race, right? And he got the best of me that time. That's right. I didn't even defeat Boo. We should move on. We should do something different. We should come back to Boo later. I don't want to do Boo right now. I mean, I never want to do Boo, though. That's the thing. But I pivoted to a new galaxy, one that I haven't visited before. How hard could this one possibly be? What do we think? I feel like it can't be that bad. Big mouth gold bait. There's even a six, uh, six guy here. The hat just means that we're gonna have to take damage, I think. <laughs> I think that just means that we're gonna be taking damage a lot. Okay, let's find out. That's the first one we've gotten. All Kaizo. Tenny with the donation. Oh no, it's frozen! Oh my god, it's very frozen. Oh, is there a coin? Is there any coins anywhere? What? Now, I'm gonna speak candidly. 
to you, the viewer. Hi. If you've made it this far, you know what kind of horrors I've had to endure, and the frustration that Kaizo Mario Galaxy has already caused me. Painting the planet yellow, the cyclone stone, the poison swamp, the golden chomp, and the sun-baked sandcastle were all difficult and daunting levels to conquer, but none of them compare to this next no, one. No, 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 no! <laughs> While editing this video, it was kind of strange. I was becoming worried for my past self because of this level. <laughs> it's right there! It's not often that I'm straight up uncomfortable with watching my streams back to edit them down. I know I'm a passionate gamer, okay? I realize I can get a little heated or salty, but at the end of the day, it's all for the love of the game and mostly just for fun. Big Mouth's gold bait was different. This was by far the most angry I've ever seen myself on camera, and it was startling. Mario, why downward though? Why, 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 why can't you just climb up on the wall and wall jump? The kicker is just the RNG when it comes to like what Mario does when he spins. Like I happen to, yeah, th th exactly, exactly that. Yes, I'm inside the brick. Yes, I shouldn't spin to free myself. Yes, but I should be able to go through with one spin, period. But I don't. So I have to restart. I'm gonna take an intermission. Reflecting on this footage legitimately caused me to second guess if this project was ever really worth the toll it ended up taking on me. <sighs> Wait, the crab got me? The crab got me when I was AFK? No! Oh god, he's coming back. Hold on. No, that guy counts. I died. Mario died. Big Mouth Galaxy requires you to spin through the frozen water constantly. Every attempt, I have to shake the Wiimote over and over and over again to have enough speed to simply make it to the golden shell without dying. And death number 1000. The constant, indiscriminate shock of damage. The way Mario maneuvers in the water, the camera, the bricks, everything here comes together to make this the worst level in the entire game. I held it that time. So I gave it my absolute best. But at the end of it, I was worn out and beaten down. I don't know if I'm doing the right things in my life. What do you think, guys? Should I start selling courses? Should I start scamming you people while I go golfing? Instead, I'm here, shaking a Wiimote as fast as possible. I could take some shortcuts in this content creation route. I could, I could do it, all right? But I don't. Oh, I hate this stupid game. <laughs> I'm just disappointed, bro. I'm gonna get a game over. We'll come back. To pick myself up, I thought I could give the fourth Grand Star level a fair shot, which proved to be less frustrating, but equally disastrous. I'm going to kill Bowser. He's the one putting me through this. He took Peach in the first place. Darkness on the horizon. <laughs> We're gonna have to see. All right. Darkness on the Horizon has only one difficult jump, but that jump proved to be a real freaking doozy. I, I don't know what to do. I, I, uh, uh, here. Oh, if I spun right there, dude. Gravity works in mysterious ways in Mario Galaxy. Back, over, up. Oh, I was, I, I. And every missed jump had me take another two minutes or so just to get another attempt at it. I have to not hold right there because if I hold right there, I end up on that little brick. And I have to hold up then, but I, ah, oh. oh. we're getting better at it. <laughs> I'm holding. Oh, I should, I was holding up. I should have been holding left. Oh, dude, it just takes 
takes so long to get here. I have to hold left, and I always forget it's left because it changes so often. Left! Wait! Wait! What? Huh? Is it up? Is it... it, it what, what direction? What direction is it? Why is it so hard? Oh, oh I don't freaking get it, dude. It, does the spin kill the momentum, like, as a whole? Like, even right there, after I spin, am I still not able to drift backward? Because I did it right that time. I just don't know. I don't know what to do. Eventually, I pivot again, back to a very spooky sprint. I can't be stuck doing this jump over and over and over again. Despite being a pretty tough level, I mostly enjoy it for the jokes my chat makes. Y'all are pretty funny sometimes. Denied donation money? Well, listen. Boo has his pockets padded with taxpayer money. But my platform is for the people. For the good of chat. This is going to pick me up from the failure I experienced in Big Mouth and on Bowser. However, my patience, it wore pretty thin on the day. Oh, what? No, where's my cursor? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Ah! Alright, launch. No! I just, I, the stupid, the stupid sensor bar. I can't do it anymore, man. It's just, ha, okay, now I'm a little salty. There's not too many other levels to do. I really don't want to do Big Mouth. The Bowser one's not impossible. Here I was, caught between Big Mouth Bowser, and Boo. Unable to make any real progress for hundreds of lives lost. This was a real low point in the run for me. I knew I had to get past these levels to beat the game. And I was so, so close. But all three of them were just insurmountable. I ended the stream defeated. But the very next day, I loaded the game back up, and I got to work. I was all business. First on my list, Boo. I was done dancing around with him. It was time to end the election once and for all. There's got to be a better way to do this part, dude. There, there just has to be. Like, getting past this is so hard. Hours of my life, and 124 deaths. More deaths than Matter Splatter Mansion's 98. A very spooky sprint was finally conquered, and the 56th star of the game was mine. The election is over. The popular vote is in, folks. Boo has lost the election. Mario is your new representative. That level took so long. That's probably the most time we spent on any individual level, including Flip Switch. I'm so happy, bro. <laughs> I'm so happy. Finally, I got to go to the third and final level in Ghostly Galaxy. Beware of Boulder Geist. Hold on. I see it right, I see something right there. The mansion is closed today, and the only way around is to parkour off this bone and make a really precise jump to the launch star. Also, just look at how the camera absolutely breaks on this section. What am I supposed to do there? Do I just have to hold back, then forward, then back, then forward? For no reason, besides the fact that the camera's wacky? Everything else is perfectly fine, except for the camera, which can't do its job. Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. As long as we're on the same page about it. I, I'm i running away from bats. Eventually, we will see, Boulder Geist. 
and eventually I'm gonna beat him down as my first act of governor. Go away. Go away. I don't think I realized how much I hated the bats in this game till right now. Use the bat to cross? Wait. Wait. But I don't exactly know how I can get them over there. Because they, they kind of track Mario. Are they gone? Where'd they go? Oh, they just despawned. Okay. Maybe it's not use the bat. L long jump, spin, adjust momentum, wall jump, spin, adjust momentum, camera shifts about eight times in that. Alright, easy. Or it doesn't shift at all, and I still die anyway! Fun. Good. Good. After some problem solving and dying a total of 27 times attempting this, the rest of the level falls neatly into place, and I make it to the coolest boss in the game, Bouldergeist. Alright, Bouldergeist. You and your freaking ghostly galaxy are about to take it and shove it. I'm burning this place to the ground, and I'm starting with you. Bouldergeist proves to be no real problem, and the 57th star was mine. That camera jump was infuriating, and the bats made me rage quit. But, first order of business in Ghostly Galaxy by Governor Mario. Eliminate Bouldergeist. I deliver on my campaign promises. Bowser was next on my list, and completing that twisted gravity jump was the only thing that stood between myself and the fourth grand star of the run. Right here, and then spins. It's pretty close, but this jump isn't even as bad as Boo, I don't think. It's literally just this one jump, and I'm pretty sure we have the level in the bag. Jump, spin, up, and I lost all my momentum. Think it's over after the part we're stuck on? I'm positive it is. As long as we can get on that little L block, I'm pretty sure we beat the level. Oh! We did it. Shut up. Don't talk about it. Just get me to Bowser. Bowser proved to be no issue after I finally got past that one section. And the 58th star of the game was mine. As it turned out, Bouldergeist wasn't quite done with me, so it was time to go back for Bouldergeist's Daredevil run. The bats! They're... they're fiending for blood! The bats here were a much bigger problem this time, and that flipped camera jump was still absolutely awful. Okay! I held! But all in all, 17 deaths later, I defeat the Spooky Stone once again, and the 59th star of the game was mine. Back to Dusty Dune for the treasure of the pyramid. I actually didn't end up dying on this level at all, as it was simple as collecting enough star bits to feed the hungry Luma and traversing the slightly altered pyramid. What was that? What is what does this do? What does that do? There's a switch. What did that do? Oh, it's a what? Dude, what is going on? It was actually a nice treat to see the different ways that Silver Star's spawns could be triggered, and all in all, it was a pretty cool palette cleanser. This was the third and final green star, and the 60th star overall. I finally had the ability to take on Bowser at the center of the universe. Unfortunately, I had some unfinished business to take care of before I could go and play with Bowser. Okay, so this is gonna suck part seven. I returned to the Sunbake Sandcastle for the final star in Dusty Dune, as it bothered me to no end that I had not completed it. This level's already hard, but having to hit the blue switch in order to make it to the secret star makes it even tougher. This level, the sand spire, drives me nuts, dude. Of course, this was always going to take a lot of tries, but I figured since I had run through the castle a number of times the day before, this would be the best chance I had at minimizing my frustration and the grind. And I was mostly right. After dying 26 times, I finally got on this run. The bullet bill on my back, I grabbed the 61st star of the run. I did say I had some unfinished business to attend to, and I wasn't about to leave it at Dusty Dune. I was feeling good with what I'd accomplished in the stream so far. So against my better judgment, I decided it was time to head back to Big Mouth Galaxy to see if I could use this momentum to complete it. 
This galaxy really did a number on me, but I wasn't about to let it get the best of me. And yeah, it did end up killing me around 10 more times. But then, we just make sure we get everything. Down. Okay, it's back this way, right? Yes, it is. Oh God, please, Mario. After shaking the Wiimote literally thousands of times, watching Mario flail around in the water over and over, and dying a total of 93 times overall, Big Mouth's golden bait was finally over, and the 60-second star of the run was mine. Thank you. Toad, please. Toad, please. Toad, please. Huh. Oh, man. Ooh, that's a lot. And Luigi is in Honey Hive. Let's go save Luigi. My plan was to go to Bowser after this, but Mail Toad intervened to let me know about Luigi in the Honey Hive Kingdom. And wanting a slight change of pace from the intensity of Big Mouth to the final level of the game, I decide that, yeah, why not? I'll save Luigi one more time. What's the harm? Hello, what am I doing? Struggling, failing. What about you? Do we think that Luigi's on this part of the level, or do we think he's further in? Luigi isn't where he normally is, though, and it takes me a good while to find him. Yes, is Luigi the source of your suffering? Guys, where's Luigi? Just so we can be done and move on. I see him. Oh, I can't be B-Mario, though. Wait. No! No, 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 I'm alive still. Where does that lead me? What the hell? Where did this come from? Are you going to take me right back to the top of the tree? Oh, it's so sweet of you. After a bit of struggle trying to shoot him down from the tree, I rescue Luigi for the third and final time to get our 63rd star, losing only four lives oh. in the process. Sure. <laughs> Fell through the ground. All good. No problems. That was fun. Oh, f*** you, yo. That is just the most uncool thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't think it's a long jump. I think a regular jump will do it. Okay. It was time. I'm on my way, Peach. Through blue stars. Determination. So much slope jumping. A lot of Wiimote spinning. We have achieved 63 whole stars in Mario Galaxy Kaizo. And that means that we go to the center of the universe. Bowser? I'm coming for you. Who knows how long it's going to take, though. The fate of the universe. <laughs>The center of the universe is about as climactic of a final level as it gets, and was incredibly rewarding to grind. Kaizo Mario Galaxy places five Launch Star Chips that you need to gather over the course of your run. One on the back side of the starting Castle Planet, one under this grate on the Magma Planet, one placed slightly above this tiny block on the Desert Planet, one placed out of your way during the Space Junk Parkour section, and lastly, one hidden in the lava cylinder in a Bowser statue. Collect all of them, and you can fly to fight Bowser for the third and final time. There's a slight catch though, as on top of the general layout of these planets being made substantially tougher, we realize what this level is going to ask of us immediately, upon loading in for the first time. That's one of them. What the hell? What is going on? And I bounce this way. I'm at 1 HP. All right, here we go. That's right. You have to do the whole thing on one health. From the castle planet all the way to the final attack on Bowser. If you get hit, you have to start the whole thing over again from the very beginning. After everything, I couldn't look back. I was going to have to do this. Good one, Dry Bones. Nice. Good job, buddy.
13 on those. Thank you, Dry Bones. Thank you, Dry Bones. Dry Bones has killed us a few times. No. It's like, great job, buddy. You did it. None of the BS did it. You did it. Yourself. You bested me in vanilla combat. No! No! It's just up there! We're learning, but still. I'm worried about that upside down section. That seems like probably the hardest part of the whole thing. At least this is a fun level to grind. <laughs> you know? It's way more fun than uh, Big Mouth. No. No! Okay. All right, I have to go faster. Wall jump, please, Mario. Oh, no, I'm dead. I uh, stupid. I, I'm... Mm. Oh, I, I thought I was going to get hit by the up gravity. So I spun because that's the next thing you do is you spin downward. But I wasn't close enough. Yeah, it's been about six and a half hours of Kaizo Galaxy today. I do want to beat this. I really just don't know if I have the endurance right this second. Also, I'm dead, 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 dead. Game over. We are gonna save Princess Peach, hopefully, or just hate ourselves trying. Oh my god, we're through! No! Camera? Camera? Ha! What the? Is he coming after me? Are they coming after me? They are. Yeah, if, if Bowser beats us here, we have to do that entire thing over again. I'm pretty sure these are the ones that come back around the planet, correct? No! No!
He runs forward. I forgot he dashes forward a, a bit. I forgot all about that. He's, he's blowing fire again! Oh no! I didn't want him to do this again at all! I can't believe the fire missed me! Come on, baby! Send him packing! Let's go! Oh my god! <laughs> I hope the Grand Star is in a totally accessible place. Oh, you guys! Oh no! I'm holding the controller for dear life, bro! Uh, there's no way I fumble this! And so, after around 10 hours of attempts, 253 lives lost, Bowser at the center of the universe was defeated, and Princess Peach and the entire world were saved. <laughs> Kaizo Mario Galaxy was a blast, and the entire game oozed personality and was brimming with difficulty. The reason that this video took so long to come out to begin with was because I wanted to do this game justice. Kaizo Mario Galaxy, it pushed me to my absolute limits, and it made me feel some of the highest highs and lowest lows I've ever felt while playing video games, and I wanted to share those with you. Thank you all for coming on this journey with me, and special thanks to the Great Waluigi for his hard work on this game. I know this is just a silly video about some fan-made modification to an almost two-decade-old Nintendo game, but the accomplishment that I felt after finally facing down Bowser at the center of the universe was so very real. I set out to beat Kaizo Mario Galaxy, and I did it. For those of you who've made it this far and are thinking about trying Kaizo Mario Galaxy yourself, I say go for it. There's a whole new version that came out literally a couple months after I finished this run, so I'd probably start there. But just be warned, in the great cosmic dark, help won't come from elsewhere. There are gonna be times where you might feel stuck, like you're fighting an uphill battle against some kind of harsh gravity. It might feel like the forces of the universe themselves are what are weighing you down. I know it can be daunting, but I'm here to tell you I know you have it in you. Dig deep. It is all up to you. You're the center of your own universe. It might be hard, and it certainly won't get any easier with time. But if you're going to get anywhere, it's up to you to take that very first jump.